Welcome, agents, to Strain 70-SKS of the Zero Point Report, the number one broadcast all about the news surrounding the Secret World IP. Today is Thursday, October 13th, 2022, and I am Ocho, one of the hosts for this evening. With me tonight, we have Tuton Waffle. How's it going? God, <laughs> scared me there for a second. It's going, <laughs> going okay. We have Jimmy the Rabbit. Yo. Hey, Jimmy. How are you? Hey, not dead yet. So yeah. That's good. Yeah. I'll, and I'll we also have, joining us with me right now, we have the one, the only, Joshua Deach Scrivnomancer. Taste and see, sweetlings. Hey, always a pleasure. Always a pleasure to have you on the show, my friend. Hey, always a pleasure to be on. I guess we are. We were also going to be waiting on Brandon from Star Anvil Studios. He also agreed to join us for tonight's show, but I, I guess we're just running late. That's okay. That's okay. We'll start. Gave him a little bit of time. We started a little late. That's weird for us. Starting a little <laughs> yeah, late. Totally not yeah, something that we do every single time. Without we're very yeah. punctual. <laughs> we start at 9 p.m. on the dot. Yeah, in another time zone, maybe. We really start 9 p.m. Central Time, really. We try Eastern, but we actually just do Central. That's the way that the way it actually goes. So welcome, welcome everybody. We are here specifically. We talk about the Secret World news, any news surrounding the Secret World IP, and we have Joshua joining us on the show tonight because he is one of the writers and one of the team members for the Secret World Tabletop RPG, which just launched on Kickstarter to thunderous applause i would say yeah that, it, kickstarter <laughs> met its goal i think in four hours or something yeah yes yeah it, it started on october 4th at around 1 p.m eastern time and by 5 p.m eastern time it had already smashed through its forty thousand dollar initial goal which, which is good because when you have a setting where everything is true, you want to get through as many stretch goals as possible to cover as much ground as possible. As much truth? Yeah. Yes. As much true as possible. As much, it's totally as much true. So, yes, it launched. It was, of course, I was, I backed it before it even hit the 40,000. Same. As, as many others did. But right, yeah, right now it stands at one hundred and three thousand nine hundred and fifty six dollars, twelve hundred and three backers. And it, it looks to just be a smashing success, an average of around eighty six dollars per backer. And has already smashed through seven stretch goals. Which is phenomenal. You guys are doing so, yoga I'm, over there. With that kind of stretching, I'm just saying. Oh yeah, <laughs> a lot of yoga. <laughs> I was like, where, where are you, you know, going? It's almost gonna be flying right over, but I'm like, oh wait, yeah. <laughs> I was like, okay. yeah. Do I acknowledge that? Okay, I just want to quickly go over the campaign. They say what's inside the secret world setting. Plenty of foundation information about the setting of this incredible game world, factions, important locations, historical events, and the current state of things for the heroes and people struggling to survive in the secret world. Character creation, plenty of new options to further define your hero, including three factions, Dragon, Illuminati, Templar, nine new classes, new backgrounds, and new feats that enhance the foundation of your concept. Subclass switching and power cards. This unique mechanic allows your character to switch between subclasses during a shorter long rest, meaning you can respec your hero when you need to change your abilities. These subclass options are presented in a deck of power cards, so you don't need to constantly flip pages in the main rulebook to make your choices. That's rules. Cool. The Secret World RPG contains all the rules you need to get started. In addition, your characters are especially difficult to kill. Each time your character dies, they return to life later, but each time they recover, they inch closer to a fate far worse than death. Game Mastering the Secret World, important and useful advice for game masters and running the high-powered characters and adventures they will face in the mysterious paths of the secret world. Threats of the secret world, the heroes of the secret world won't lack foes to challenge them. From the restless dead known as Revenants to far more dangerous enemies, this book contains plenty of enemies to challenge your players. There's going to be an art book, which the art looks fantastic, by the way. We have a question uh, already. Okay. How has it been to get back into the secret world space after being away for a while? It's like coming home. A, a creator will often say about a project, oh, this project's really special, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But the secret world definitely was one, uh, certainly one where, certainly the one I probably connected the most with the uh, who played and enjoyed the setting. Having spent so much brain time there, coming back to it has, has been like, oh, I miss this place. So I'll give a follow-up question to that. Did you ever actually 
leave the secret world. No one <laughs> leaves the secret world. <laughs> once once you hear the buzzing. Yeah. <laughs> Could you there. actually leave the secret world? Let's see. They say that the non-digital rewards will be handled by print on demand through drive through RPG. Backers will receive a code to print books at cost using drive through RPG's site. I'm not entirely sure exactly what that means. It means you have to pay to have it printed. I think it means we, we get like a code that we could then say, okay, here's our code, print the book for us, basically. Yeah, um, I'm, I don't know if Scrib knows more. I don't, so I don't want to give a okay. definitive answer. Okay, there. All right. yeah. My, my, some, because yeah, it, it was some... a controversial thing on the Kickstarter, like after when people right, were right. figuring it out in the comments, they're like, oh, just because you backed it in print doesn't mean you get it in print. You get the code that lets you pay to have it printed. I'm not, I'm not positive. Yeah. I'm not positive. That means you get a code at a certain backing and then you pay to get it printed. Or if you backed it and you get a book, you also, if you want other copies, I'm not sure. No, I, I think yeah, if you want, if you they, want they more answered, copies. They answer, no, they answered it. You have to pay oh, okay. to have print it. Yeah, yeah. Okay. They can't afford, they couldn't afford to do the whole stock printing themselves. Now, the thing is though, if you did the backing level where you like wanted it printed, you still get like the PDFs. So let's say you back the level that, you know, has, I don't know, six different printed things. Once you get it, right, look, next year, whenever it's out, you'll get the codes, but you don't have to use them and you get to determine what quality it's printed at. Because you're paying. And you could have it printed, you said you'll get a code that to have it printed at cost, which means basically as cheap as they Yeah, can as cheap as, it. there's no, there's, they're not making any money on the printing because they're not printing it. You are. Right. But the thing that some the people were upset about is they didn't think it was clear enough in the little bullet points. It does explain it better, a little a different section of the Kickstarter. But there was definitely some kerfuffle in the comments area and a couple of people like backed out. Obviously, it wasn't a huge deterrent because it's still doing really well. Yeah, um, no, I, I don't think that was only, necessarily a deterrent for me. And it's also not like unheard of. It's not something that no one's done before. That's why that place exists. That printing place. It's like pretty a pretty common kind of do-it-yourself solution. It says delivery is being handled by drive through RPG. This allows smaller publishers the ability to run fulfillment without making shipping a full-time job. It also allows us to put more money toward the book instead. What this means is that we will send you a code to print your product using drive through RPG at cost as part of the Kickstarter fulfillment. You'll receive download links for any digital products as well. Drive through RPG charges a shipping fee for the printed products, which still saves you money since they are printing and shipping directly to you. Yeah. Yes. So basically, yes, there will be extra cost to actually have it printed and shipped to you, but it's not shouldn't be as exorbitant as if because they're going to offer a code to have it at cost, so it's not going to be like totally exorbitant. That makes sense. Yeah. yeah and drive through so. RPG. Pretty is sure. Better. Yeah. Drive through RPG is good in that it yeah it allows a lot of people who are either a small publisher or just starting out it's a way to to get some game books out there without without the risks of of, of printing. yeah you don't have a garage full of shit can't <clears throat> which i've heard yeah from many others who have done kickstarters and they've shown oh here's a picture of yeah like my entire living room has been taken over by stuff by merchandise fire says it's actually a much better way to do it and it's my understanding don't quote me on it but the codes will not have an expiration i believe i saw brandon say that in the Star Anvil Kickstarter today, something along that lines as well. Yeah, but, so like if if you got the codes, you could just yeah. decide I'm a, I can afford to print this book at the quality I want now, and I can just have the other one printed in a month or two or whatever. Right. I feel like you're having to foot this other bill. Like you know, for like me, saying, like I back, I back to Kickstarter, and then I'm having to pay again. So like, yeah, oh, I'm having to front the front the printing costs. So it, it, it's a work. It works out. Yeah, I think it's fine. Like I said, like for me personally, like I think I would want like the maybe the core book and then I might not even print the other ones right away or even necessarily. Right. It all depends. I can't, by the way, I can't believe we killed that Jack before kick this out. <laughs> like, there You're is welcome. literally four of us here. <clears throat> Waffle abandoned us. But hi, Faux Fire. Hey, Vomer. Hey, Scratch. Welcome. Welcome to the stream. And then, right, they've gone through current through current stretch goals, including more Secret World content, monster deck PDFs for everybody, more artwork, more monsters, pre-gen pack, an eight-page intro adventure, which is cool, bonus maps, and the next one, if they hit the $120,000 goal, will be Secret World Bestiary, 10 more pages of 
more additional monsters to the campaign. So this is all. Yes. Oh, just all of it. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Give absolutely. Give it to me now. Yes. Want it now. I'll have what he's having. It's been what? How many months? It's been over a year, really, <clears throat> since they first announced to pretty much the release of the Kickstarter on the 4th. So it's a big hype, slow build of getting the people who are fans of Secret World Legends or Secret World say, oh, we got this tabletop or this new game coming out. What is it? So Scrivenomancer, of course we have yeah Joshua Deesh here. Tell us, what is your role basically in this tabletop RPG? So early on, I put together a, I consulted with them. So I put together a lore kind of Bible, setting Bible suggestions for certain things. And I wrote up some example things like an example monster or just general notes. And then in the meet in the time between I've, I've come on to, to write out certain bits of the book and have writers room meetings and, and be like, just give the benefit of having worked on the MMO. Okay. All right. And you have, of course, you're also a pretty big tabletop fan yourself. Yes, that is my, it's probably my biggest gaming love. So this is exciting for me. I, so uh, me personally, I've had like some pretty, I've, I haven't had greatest experience with it myself, but it can vary depending on, on one's table. Yeah, certainly. Yeah. I've, geez, I've been tabletop gaming since 1990 something, early nineties. Okay. A little after it was fashionable to have the satanic panic, but still early enough that my grandmother could have her own mini satanic panic and give me the talk <laughs> about Dungeons and Dragons. Luckily, it didn't stick. Or it pushed me further into it. I don't know. Be like, but this is all Satanism. And you're like, yeah. oh. sounds so metal. Yeah, be like, that sounds good to me. I'm down with that. Yeah, uh, I remember the D&D &D or the anti Dungeons and Dragons shit of like the 90s. Like oh yeah, late yeah. 90s oh man like 80s yeah. early 90s 80s, yeah. 80s into 90s yeah it was something <laughs> and of course I also made there. popular in the latest season of stranger things that's true I'm yeah not caught yeah. up in that but yeah yeah and it's but, scary uh, like how accurate that was yeah <laughs> yeah remember we've, even before i was gaming i remember a time as a kid when they'd be like oh yeah in the woods and the little small town they'd be like oh yeah in the woods that's where the satans just sacrifice animals and like adults believe that and it mm, never happened yeah. <laughs> they, they made little movies about it mm. i don't know if you guys ever saw any of that stuff like churches or like yeah. groups they, they put out like little <clears throat> films of the evils uh, of D D. Films and little comic books, and I forget yes. what those little comic books were called. Oh, but this, those uh, are entertaining as hell. Yeah, it, it's a fascinating subject overall. And there's no one person. That, like, the Satanic Panic was this sort of. No, but the strips were movement. one person. Oh yeah, that's one They're, person. Those were like, oh, God, the name is escaping me. Oh, it's Chick like, Tracks. Yeah, someone has it in the Chick. chat there. Yes, yeah. I was thinking Chick something, and I, I thought I was thinking strips, but yes, tracks. Chicklets? No. <laughs> because because my parents and my grandparents are very religious, so I, I'm pretty sure I held some of those in person. Like, I've actually had the chicken tracks. Yeah, there like, was the person that wrote those, and then there was also a like a failed comedian, and I'm blanking on his name, who started giving talks about this the stuff that happened to him, and he was just claiming there were satanic meetings where they like just sacrificed thousands of people. He's walking around free, but he claimed all this stuff, and uh, yeah, that all helped. Who would to, have known that adults happen. would have been so gullible to misinformation? Yeah, the older <laughs> you get, the more you realize adults are pretty much the adults from The Simpsons. And it's very, it's a very thin level of satire as opposed to the, what you thought was a ridiculous level. Of yeah, you're like that's ridiculous. Yeah. No, it's the it's just straight up truth, really. Bill Gates <sighs> is trying to microchip me. Bill Gates also not give a shit about you. I had a microchip to me, in my vaccine, but let's not say anything about the phone that we're carrying around all day. What, <laughs> They're tracking really, me. Yes. I really think it's a self-importance thing. Whenever I see those kind of things, when they say that stuff like straight face, it's, I think they just want to believe that they're that important. That any, yeah. Yeah. You matter enough for someone to actually want to do that to you. When mm. really no one gives a shit. That's the cold hard truth is no one really cares. If you have a nemesis, you matter. Yes. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's true. It's true. Be like, they're out to get me. Sure they are. It's like I said, we're going down to uh, to Disney later on this month. And Disney tracks the heck out of you when you're down there. They do. They like oh, yeah. they try to track as much as they can about you at all points and whatever. But really 
the individual person, they don't care. They don't care about the individual person. They care about everyone as a group and whether they can herd people this direction or herd people that direction or get people, push people to different areas so that they can get everybody, uh, instead of all like con conglomerating in one area to go into like multiple areas and spread yourselves out so everyone has a better experience. Yeah, about the individual person, they don't care. They don't care. Yeah. Oh, well, they shit. don't care about the person. They care about your wallet. <laughs> yes. And, exactly. and yeah. what they can get you to spend too, right? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yes, we will. We will try. We will try, Bomber. For you, I'll have fun. I wasn't planning on having fun, but now that you said, I better have tons of fun. I will. <laughs> Disney is a dragon faction front. Ooh. I'll take it. I'll take Dragon over Illuminati about... for that. Absolutely. <laughs> the great thing about taking this game to a tabletop setting is easy. You can make that happen. It's you could do that. Again. Yes, mm -hmm. you exactly. could do that. You could absolutely have adventures in Disney. You could have licenses we would dare to touch. You could and even do that's why when the Kickstarter first it. started and people were like, "Oh, the artwork doesn't match what's in my head." Part of me was like, "And it's so you like think the D and D artwork matched what was in my head." Right. Yeah, it's a Table... guide, sure, but it's not yeah. hardcore. You, Tabletop you is you to create. be tweaked. Yeah, yeah. If you yeah. see a picture of Revenant, and you don't like that. Go. You can go look online. I do this all the time, uh, Deviant Art or wherever. And obviously, if you do anything published, <laughs> pay and credit artists. Yeah. But in your own home game, if you're making a token for a character, we'll often take art. Although I have a friend now who he just tends to cast all the NPCs as uh, as celebrities and actors which at first I didn't like. So I'm like, that's distracting, but now it's awesome. It tells a lot about the character before we know anything else. And we're always excited to see who he's cast as <laughs> Mr. T I'll shows up. up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We had we had two Dolly Parton twins show up in the latest D&D &D game. <laughs> it's nice. You already have a, a picture in your head. You've already got like a personality set up in your head. Yeah, totally. I could see that. You could. So, I, see, I see Jeff Goldblum in the comments. You could cast Jeff Goldblum as whoever you want. Do you want Jeff Goldblum to be Saeed? Do you want him whoever? Yeah. Or um, that'd be very who, who would he be good as? I'd say, uh, but, but Jeffrey Combs is so perfect. As, as Jeffrey Combs, yeah, yeah, all the way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Jeffrey Combs could play every character. That's another idea. Have every NPC just be Jeffrey Combs. No, in fact, Jeffrey Combs did a voice for a character in a independent film that my sister acted in. So, okay. Oh, nice. Besides the game, I'm one step removed. Here's another fun fact. Jeffrey Combs had a Kickstarter for he was doing a one-man production of Alan Poe. And he actually did he actually was like they wanted to film it, they wanted to produce it, they wanted to get it out there, they wanted to make DVDs of it. And it was like basically Jeffrey Combs as Edgar Allan Poe and it failed its Kickstarter. Oh no. That's horrible because I heard it was an awesome show. I would love yeah. to see it. I have the audio. You can buy the audio version of it on Audible, I believe. I think that's where I listened to it. It's so good. Yeah, it failed. It failed. The, the oh, Kickstarter failed. No. I know because I backed it and it still failed. This makes me sad. It, yeah, it was like, what? No, Combs Probably just that. lack of knowledge that it existed, potentially. That's basically what I could think of. But man, I don't know why it got so little thing. I might be wrong. I might be misremembering, but I think the original theatrical version was directed by, and I'm blanking on the name, but the guy that directed Jeffrey Combs in Reanimator. Okay. Oh, wow. He was the director of Reanimator. Yeah. Oh, wow. And yeah, he unfortunately passed away a few years ago, but mm. I think he directed that Edgar Allan Poe play, but I could, I reserve the right to be wrong. Oh, okay. All right. All right, Darkness, you're never too young to watch 80s films. Just go back and watch them. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> they still exist, and they're still good. Just strap mm -hmm. yourself into a chair. And just watch them. <laughs> you can't rent them from Blockbuster anymore, sadly. But Yeah, you don't get the, the full experience of going to Blockbuster and walking down the horror aisle and seeing all the it's cool true. All the boxes, yeah. Yeah. Choice, choice of what to get on a Friday night. <laughs> Re reading the back of boxes of movies you're not allowed to see and you're, just, mm. you're imagining them in your head just based on the few images and a little bit of text. Which one do I need to watch with Jeffrey Combs? I guess Reanimator is that that's a good one that's basically the yeah the the primary one other than that oh, I would uh, say the frighteners <laughs> he's my favorite part of the movie the frighteners the frighteners his okay his character in that is excellent that character if if you watch that movie that character would make an excellent transport right to the secret world okay he, he plays an occult kind of investigator who's really messed up like an fbi agent if Mulder was really messed up by the things that had happened to him so you'd have you just have to just watch the movie and yeah because Mulder is yes. oddly 
not. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's got he's got some elasticity to his, I think, his sanity. That he's he's fairly doing. unfazed, pretty much all the time. Yeah, this is if someone went and went undercover into occult crimes and things and just came out of it just really messed up. Offside. Ocelot says he played a Cardassian in Deep Space Nine at some point. No, he did not play a Cardassian. He played like every other race, but not a Cardassian. <laughs> yeah, he was in like almost every newer Star Trek series. He played yeah, a just a lot of stuff because I remember he was in Pacific Rim. He played a Ferengi. He played. He played. That's just Deep Space Nine. Yeah, he was just all over the place, all over the place. Just fantastic. But this isn't. We're not really here to talk about. Jeffrey that's Combs, true. Necessarily. That's true. <laughs> Welcome to the Jeffrey Combs podcast. <laughs> yeah. Welcome to the Jeffrey Combs podcast. We just talk about Jeffrey Combs. We're just here to talk about Jay Combs. Oh, and here's our secret guest. It's Jeffrey Combs. No. <gasps> God, I wish. Welcome <laughs> in, everyone. Say hello. That would be pretty cool. I feel kind of <laughs> uncomfortable <laughs> since his Kickstarter failed and they weren't really good. But your Kickstarter. Oh, sure. Was sure, just rub it in. I don't. But I, I'm saying that jokingly because I don't feel like that's in, in a more correct universe. It would have been the reverse. Don't tell Brandon I said that. I'm just not thinking of a Jeffrey Combs fan. I, I don't understand it. I don't understand how yeah. it failed. I don't understand how it failed either. I really don't. I thought that was going to be like, I thought people would absolutely want to see, yeah, Jeffrey Combs do a live play of Edgar Allan Poe. I'd be like, yes. Yes. I'm sorry. In a perfectly just universe, both Kickstarters would be doing awesome. So I guess we live in a half just universe. That's fair. I feel like that is the universe we live in. I just feel bad because I want to watch that that particular play. But yeah, okay. So back to back to him a penny a word. Oh no, he heard me. Oh, shit, my love of Jeffrey Combs is gonna make my child starve. My, so, I mean, is my sentence for the why. day. My my yeah, out of context sentence why. for the day. It might, you know, it might be worth it. That might be not a too terrible one. So, um, so Abraham had to sacrifice Isaac. Things yeah, gotta happen. sacrifices must occur. Okay. <clears throat> so your project or your your work on the tabletop RPG, you said you're basically a consultant. You're basically consultant now, writer and uh, writer. Yeah. Yes. What can you tell us about possible differences between what we see in Secret World in the game and what we would see in Secret World the tabletop RPG? Is there what do you what will we see kind of like the additions? I think you'll see you'll see some expansion. You have, like the settings tagline is everything is true, so which is great, but in a finite MMO game, and MMO games are still finite even though they can go mm -hmm. on quite a long time. You can only cover so many places and things with that phrase, but uh, with a tabletop game, you can cover just about anything or at least hint and give the tools to the game masters and players to potentially cover mm -hmm. anything the time in between the 10 or so years you'll see some development there though that'll be if we consider agartha a branching tree of, of both time space and maybe let's even say like a multiverse the tabletop space might be its own branch what happens there does not necessarily dictate what would happen in any future game products that funcom releases yeah i would say um, what you're saying is it's not canon yeah 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 but but it kind of can be yeah, oh, and it can be. Works. What, mm -hmm. and yeah, yeah. And what happens in the tabletop game, who knows, might show up in some future product, which is, which would be great. But, but yeah, Funcom isn't tied to that. But that's important because that frees us to do what we want or less, but also more importantly, frees up everyone's table. You can stick really close to the canon or you can go into some really weird directions. I was um, like, we have Star Anvil in the chat. Yeah, get in here. Get in here, man. Join us. Stop me from saying things. I did, yeah, I did I tried send sending the Discord. A link. So tell us, Chris. I did send Discord link to the Twitter last night, I believe. But I'll I say, yeah, you, you, send in our, you join in our Discord. Go ahead and join in the general lobby of our Discord, and we, we will pull we will you in. Down. Or if you want to yeah. join in video, I will, I will send you, well, I'll try to send you a link if you want to go on video. So before he gets in here, a scripted answer, how do you really feel about... Yeah, it's just us here. Don't worry about Yeah, uh, He trapped me in a ritual circle, which enslaves me to this Kickstarter and these products until such a time I'm not allowed to say. Good answer, though. Good answer. I appreciate it. Uh, yeah, you'll, so yeah, we'll see expansions on things. And I'm hoping sections that give, again, tools like, you know, you'll probably see, I haven't seen finished monster sections yet. We have certain monsters written up and certain coming in the pipeline certainly the ones you know and love from the game like revenants was i think that was the first one i wrote as a like a sample here's what the format should look like etc but hopefully you'll see monsters that uh, you haven't seen in the mmo and i'd like now that i'm thinking about it and this is something i'll probably bring up at our next meeting i'd like there to be a, a section on designing your creatures and antagonists so that you can look up any kind of mythology or a weird conspiracy and 
flesh that out in your secret world because everything is true. Everything. And in a tabletop game, you get to make that a lot more real. And also, since we're doing fifth ed D20 rules, you'll see classes where secret world is much, the MMO is much softer on classes. It's really just ability buying and then sort of soft classes that are more like ability packages that you can buy. So in this, you'll see, we're working on them now. You'll see classes that I'm trying to make fit those. What uh, I'm not the systems person, but as far as writing up the kind of lore behind them and what they might shape up to be, I'm trying to write something that fits into the, that kind of rule set and uh, still fits within that sort of narrative lore okay. of playing, a, particularly playing be a one imbued by Gaia. Yes. So classes will represent how one focuses their anima and expresses it basically. Okay. Fofire asks, how is the world setting portrayed differently in the tabletop RPG versus the MMO? What I mean is the difference between writing something for people to use versus for people to play in. Does that make mm. sense? No, it is. Yeah. Some of that you'd mentioned one of the stretch goals was it like an adventure, an intro adventure and that'll be written out. Go here, do this. But yeah, there'll also be things written out to give you want to give in a tabletop game. You want to give tools for the game master to design things for the players to play. So it's, you're giving some particulars while leaving certain things open and giving tools for the players to explore beyond the books themselves. Okay. Starringville says that they're in. Can you hear me? Hello. Hey. Hey, there he is. There you go. I just turn on my camera because I don't I, can't, I don't have a fancy uh, green screen thing behind me. I'm not gonna let you see my basement behind me. That's okay. We'll oh, give no you a, uh, a an anime avatar. That's okay. That's fine. <laughs> no, we don't. They'll probably look better <laughs> than I look anyway. Oh, I'll have to <laughs> look for a good one then. I wanted one. Welcome, so. welcome. I'm now a little flustered. Excuse me. I'm eating all kinds of royalty here. Welcome, Brandon Verhalen. Yeah, no, you're not meeting royalty. Thank you. But yes, welcome, welcome, Brandon from Star Anvil Studios to the show. We are absolutely happy to have you. And we just want to say we are currently, we're big fans. We're really excited. We've been talking about this Kickstarter every part of the way it, since it's, since we've heard about its inception, since we've heard about all that, because we like to say all the news about the secret world that we could find. And we are, we have been extremely excited to, <laughs> dang you, <laughs> dang you waffle. Wow. I look better than I do in real life. Good job. <laughs> it's missing my beard, but continue. Gosh, quick gosh, darn it. Well, uh, but your profile says that you have, you've been an RPG enthusiast for over 30 years, a, life, a lifelong fan of all things sci-fi and fantasy. You've been inspired mm -hmm. by the Alternity RPG to create your first foray into the gaming world with Saints and Sinners, a gritty mm -hmm. sci-fi setting for the tiny D6 system. Creating Saints and Sinners led you to the foundation of Star Anvil Studios in 2017. You are a patron of gaming artwork and have done the art direction for Star Anvil Studios since the beginning. Your expertise with art direction has led to featuring several pieces in the Palladium Rift. But as a professional nurse, you live and work in... Oh, I'm not going to say that part. That's <laughs> you, can, you can see that part on the on the Kickstarter yourself. Anyway, but you are the Chief Executive Officer for Star Anvil Studios. Welcome. As I said, we are very excited. We want to give you a big congratulations, first and foremost, on the super successful <clears throat> Kickstarter. As we said, it completing the full 40,000 funding goal in about, what, four hours? Say four hours, maybe four four five hours. hours, four and a half, five, four, four and a half, five. All right. I was counting. <laughs> okay. Cause you know, um, the big concern was you put that big a goal. A lot of companies are actually starting off with, they're doing more of a pre, they, they've already done the product. They just want to get it started. So they do a very low goal. They already know mm -hmm. they're going to make it anyway. We're the opposite. We're actually using Kickstarter the way it was set up. We need the money to make the project. So we put down, this will for sure get it done. And then we blew it out of the water. So it was great. And not only blowing it out of the water, but then blasting through, as of right now, seven different stretch goals on top of that. Oh, yeah. Is that including more Secret World content, monster PD, a monster deck PDFs for everyone, more artwork, more monsters, a pre-gen pack, an eight-page intro adventure, bonus maps, and currently working towards the a Secret World bestiary PDF also on the way. Yeah, we just don't want to I keep think... adding stuff directly to the book because that would increase the cost of the book. And a PDF, we can give it to everyone. And that was a simple way to add that in there and give a few more monsters. A, first question is, I guess, is how do you like working on the Secret World IP? What led you to the Secret World IP in the first place? So I played the game way back and I've not been able to get it to work on my computer for a while now, but I've played it quite a bit. But my wife is like multiple characters to 50 and she loved it. And I was like, man, and I just, the first part of the game really always caught me the mood, the setting. It's just such a cool looking, it drags you right to this sort of ambiance of horror and action. 
and story and puzzles all in one that most games never bother with even attempting, which that was cool. And then I was just sitting around going, I need an IP one day that would help us get on the map. I said, I wonder if I could get the secret world. And mm. so I sent an email to Funcom and lo and behold, they said, they sent me back. Hey, let's talk. And uh, here we are. I've actually had the IP for two years, but I had to find people that would get it done. Getting Josh was a big key to that. Okay. They didn't want to do it yeah, wrong. The summoning circle. <laughs> yes. The yes. demonic summoning uh, circle. Yeah. He had to do his, his research with forbidden tomes. Yes. The whole point is if I can't get the tone right, if I can't get the story, you could choose almost any system and create it. The fans want the product. What they really mm -hmm. want is the lore and story to be right. Everyone has their system preference, and I've heard ad infinitum on oh, different... I'm sure. Everyone has their preference, and that's okay. Whatever you like for your system is what you're going to like. I'm not going to change your mind on that. But if I don't get the story right, if the setting's not right, then there's no point in doing the game. Right, because then it would feel disingenuous in a right, sense. Like a ripoff. Don't want to do that. We want it to be. We want people to feel like, hey, the story's right, the setting's right, they gave us the lore from what happened before, and hey, look at this cool new stuff to expand the world, which, on a side note, is very specifically from Funcom, is not canon. However, what you choose to call canon in your world is up to you. But yeah, contractually, we are a, uh, inspired by, is the legal term we're to use. So that's what yes. we're inspired by. But yes. that works perfectly fine in a tabletop setting where yeah. it, it works almost exclusively more, that way. Yeah, it gives us more room. Actually, it gives a little more freedom to add new stuff to it and go down some paths that we're not restrained by the. I don't want to take away from the original story. We want to add to it and expand it, and it gives us some freedom to do that. That's fantastic. So you said you've been playing tabletop games for 30, 30 some odd years. It started in nineteen ninety when some. Back in the day when there was arcades, when you actually had to walk in to play them, you didn't really play them at home when the Atari was the home system. And this guy said, okay. hey, you, you want to play Dungeons and Dragons? And I heard you talk about Satanic Panic earlier. And I was kind of like, oh, isn't yeah. that the devil stuff? And he said, no, I do. We sit around the table, we BS and tell stories. What kind of stories and fantasy do you like? I said, I like King Arthur. He says, you're a paladin. And so my first character was a paladin. Yeah, very nice. <laughs> And so with all that extensive knowledge, of course, yeah, as you said, you've heard about this ad infinitum. What basically led you to using 5th edition for... Now, now, keep in mind, I have extremely little experience with tabletop RPGs. The most that I know is essentially just the multitude of stuff that I just hear, the ephemera. But what led you to use 5th edition from a more experienced standpoint for the, for this product. It's really pretty simple. I play, I played fifth edition D and D, whatever layers I played second edition, whatever. And I play a lot of Savage Worlds is my other favorite system. And both are no, but let's face it. Five E fifth edition Dungeons and Dragons. As far as that name, people recognize it legally. We can't call our game Dungeons and Dragons because it's not, it's based on the fifth edition srd and so forth but it's it's that people recognize those rules and even if they don't know what a role like some people don't know a role-playing game is they go i've heard of that i have an idea it's also when a lot of people know how to use the system they can teach people how to use the system it's going to be more accessible to more people is it the perfect system that's a matter of preference yeah i would say that's that would be i'm sure that's why there's a whole plethora of different why aren't well, you also, using any decent like player group also knows that even the system you're using is a suggestion. Look yeah, at it this yeah. way. So many people say, I've seen the bulk of the people, they don't mind. They don't care what systems is. Then there's people who are going to, they don't want it because it's 5e. Okay. That's absolutely your right to just choose a system mm -hmm. you're happy with or not. And then there's people say, I'm going to convert it to X system. The thing is so many people know how to play D and D. They know how to convert it. It's a baseline, mm -hmm. whether you like it or not, yeah. that people understand. Now, later on, do I want to do at least one other system for the game? I would love to, and it's a thought. It will just depend how successful we are. Obviously, we've got this one paid for, but when it's all said and done and all paid for, we'll take a look at options down the road. It definitely won't be next year, but there are thoughts to give people another option for those that want it. Fofar says, yeah, 5e five, five, five e is really flexible in terms of what you can do with it. You could play a vast different array of genres with it. And from my limited experience, I heard that basically 5th edition felt more video gamey as opposed to... 4th edition to... had that. I've always heard that 4th edition was felt more 
video gamey. In fact, that was kind of like fourth edition's concept was to mimic that a bit. Yeah, fourth okay. edition was very much like MMO of the tabletop game. Okay. And so, uh, so it's a very what would change between fourth and fifth then? Fifth, I would say fifth. Fifth feels less MMO y like that. It's more like a streamlined version of past past editions. Okay. It's got a little bit from a bunch of editions streamlined a bit for broader play. Some people say it's too simple. Maybe that's why it's gained gained so much popularity, because it is simpler. Is it the simplest game? Absolutely not. But no. it, it struck that chord with a lot of people and happened to bring a lot of people along for whatever reason. Okay. That's excellent. So what do you think, or what, do you, what are your plans for essentially trying to take the, take the systems that are currently in Secret World? Obviously, the Secret World has a lot of systems that, you know, as far as like death and how death works mm -hmm. in the game and how, how do you, th what sort of mechanics do you think, or, or sorry, what sort of mechanics, how will they play out on the tabletop space as they play out in Secret World itself? So, well, for example, death and weapons. Death and is a huge and thing, and I've actually talked to Josh about it. The only reason we won't answer that too directly right now is I'm still putting together our notes that we want to... Everything has to be approved by Funcom back and forth. Okay. Uh, we yeah. definitely have some ideas to deal with death, and I will say this. Bees don't really die, at least not easily. We have to figure out a way, and I have ideas. We're just waiting to get approved to go for sure on this, but there has to be a mechanic that makes death I don't want to say painful, but pay a price that doesn't take away from the way bees work. And I have a, I think it's a really cool idea that I really want to tell you, but I can't. <laughs> okay. Let's okay. Just, All let's right. just say it, the way, but what I have in mind is that dying eventually enough times is bad for you. It works that way in the game currently. Yeah. <laughs> a bit more but yeah sure <laughs> so what i mean by that is in the original in the first iteration of the game dying just broke your gear but in legends you have your anima essence and if you die enough times you get penalties to your combat efic efficiency if you don't repair it yeah, uh, that's the legend like, system there will be some mechanical sides to it a little bit but there's more of a long-term like a long-term problem if you keep dying so gotcha. you don't want to do it a lot it will be bad eventually i'll say on the kickstarter itself you hinted at that a little bit saying that now i'm just trying to find it again and i'm having trouble finding it in that the, each time you there it is each time your character secret world rpg contains all the rules you need to get started in addition your characters are especially difficult to kill each time your character dies they return to life later but each time they recover, they inch closer to a fate far worse than death. That's yes. basically the hint. Yes. Yes. Um, devastating. So how are you, let's talk about maybe some classes. Like what classes do you have set up for, if you could talk about it, what classes do you have set up for the tabletop so far? Josh, you've just finished the big write up on the first one. Once you, in broad strokes, because it's not finalized with anything, but once you cover what you did on, was it the Ravager you did? Yeah. So we took the names of the sort of, class ability packages from the MMO. And mm -hmm. I took that list and I developed independently of that, what I thought would fit in a 5e like kinds of roles you'd play. And we basically the classes represent player characters, by the way, at least in the core book, our bees are those that were imbued by Gaia with anima. Okay. Um, and classes are basically represent how they channel that anima, what they do with it. And in the MMO, there's like the two weapon system, but that's largely a mechanic system. It's not a narrative conceit. There's, there's no lore. I'm like, a bee must grab this weapon and that weapon to achieve. There's nothing right. story-wise in there. And everyone kind of goes with that. And they, especially in the role-playing communities, makes up kind of their own emerging narrative about what their characters are that are independent of that system. So. I wanted to do the classes in ways that would allow players to to take that sort of emergent narrative and go with it. So we basically, we have classes that uh, there are those who channel their anima through, specifically through weapons, like melee weapons. There's a few classes that specifically go into that with different flavors of that. There are classes that channel their anima into just being tactically better. Maybe they're, maybe they're super personnel in, in, during their quote unquote normal life, and now they've got anima in them. So they use their hardened skills along with a little burst of, of anima enhancement. And then there are those who do 
use their anima to boost certain spell casting magical disciplines. So maybe they were a cultist, an occultist in, in, in life, their normal life, or upon being imbued with anima, it just comes naturally to them. So there's a few magic classes. There's some melee classes there. The Ravagers, which, yeah, that one is the most polished so far. That is a sort of, in the tabletop game, that is a sort of, ma it's one of the magic classes, but it's melee centric. It's I'm taking the anima and where a lot of people are like, I'm going to, channel the anima into this sword or into this gun because it's uh, it's better if that energy is going there as opposed to just sitting in my body and, and exploding in weird and chaotic ways whereas a ravager is just like, no put it through my veins and right so right that's, that's a lot more i'm channeling it i'm gonna make flaming fists or i'm gonna shape change in weird ways or just other strange bits of chaos so the uh, frenzying melee magic class okay so yeah because as we understand or what we currently understand about how the weapons work in Secret World is that, yeah, they're all sort of focus. They're all a focus to basically use this, the anima powers. Right. It's not just the sword or the gun. Around. Right. It's not just the sword or the gun that's doing the damage. That's almost like a symbol of intent for. for and so it all comes weapon. internally. And it's so it's how each person brings that out from like their personality or their. Right. Their it's background almost, and, in a funny way, as an analogy, think about when Green Lantern wants to focus on doing something. This is not perfect analogy but you get the idea when he wants to shoot something he forms a gun so in the game you're using a gun to represent the fact that you're using some kind of ranged attack and using a, trying to translate the video game directly to a tabletop with an exact one-to-one -one system is ross who we work with he's my partner in this therein lies madness um <laughs> yes if you really want to play the video game way it works, the best way to get mm. that experience is in the video game. If you want the story and narrative focus of the way the game works, we're going to be able to give you that and then some in the TTRPG. Excellent. Yeah. Okay. I feel like you'll, I feel like you'll have more leeway to make the characters that maybe you've through your own emergent narrative while you've been playing the MMO, possibly role playing, possibly just in your own head while you're playing. I do that a lot when I play the games, you'll have tools to maybe make that happen even more thoroughly. That sounds fantastic. And the power cards. Oh, Josh went I out. I had a question ones. about that. So the power cards are going to be. It's kind of like having that ability to swap out a skill, set, a, a subclass set, set of abilities. That instead of being like, okay, my character can only be this, as your character levels or gains abilities, you'll be able to get more of those. So your character is going to be more flexible, but you can't use them all at once. You can use a set at a time and that's going to let you have some of that flexibility without and but you have to earn it you can't just suddenly have i have everything she can let you do whatever you want in his game or her game but mm -hmm. it's a way to give the players that ability to shoot for something how they expand their abilities okay actually a question about that because i like that concept but it made me think of master planner in the original game is there would there be any kind of ideas for scenarios where you can't do that like you're locked out of it. Go ahead. Sorry. I, I was going to explain Master Planner in the first place. Master Planner was like you went into a dungeon and you you didn't change any of your abilities or abilities, any of your yeah, yeah you, you didn't change anything or, or clothes. <laughs> right. You just went in and basically just from the get go because the strength of Secret World, the original one, was basically in that for each boss you came across, you'd have a whole different setup for it. Or you'd have to take around to, you know, of all the different tools in your in the in your abilities of shifting it around to best combat the situation. But Master Planner was all about basically just having one and just doing it. Just FYI. Just limiting, limiting basically. So the power we set it up with short and long rest is the only time you can change it. So I guarantee there's going to be people that are going to let their players switch whenever they want, as long as they're not in combat. That'll be, I'm sure somebody will right, do that. Right. But the idea, but the, it's almost a personal preference in my head, how I'd like to do it. Just, you can't change during the combat. Once you're in it, you're in it. But yeah. the idea is the short and long rest. Cause that gives the GM the ability to kind of, if they plan an encounter, like what are you locking in as before this starts? Then right, at least they right, understand right. what they're dealing with, because that's for some that will work better. But that's the idea. It's not something you can do every single second in the middle of a fight. That would be that, that's really hard for some GMs to handle. So we put that in the rules. But again, people run the rules the way they want. Some people will switch sure. during the game. The GM like, will be fine with that. Play hmm? Monopoly. House rules. House rules. I want all hotels all I the mean, time. If you get oh, them, I'm sure. I saw. I did see a question in our chat here. Any attempt? Or anything like either anima allocation or aegis? Aegis. Oof. 
again, we're building these classes. And again, 5e is a class-based system. Yeah. Okay. And so just to clarify, so anima allocation would be a class, I guess, like a system mechanic. So I don't, I don't know. It's a, that... it's a game mechanic. Yeah. Yeah. It's a game but mechanic it... where you can basically say, I want to, instead of doing DPS this time around, I want to take basically the same class that I am in now, but tank with it. Or I do the same class I'm in yeah. now, but heal with it. That's going to be in the same realm as the power cards with the subclasses. We're going to lean towards okay. one, hey, I'm going to do, I'm this main class, but I'll take these extra sub powers and add them in. And that's going to let you kind of lean your character in a direction. Whereas Aegis is different because I'm going to speak to that, but Aegis is also like lore based. That I is think true. It's um, mostly in Tokyo, but I don't remember if it was planned to show up anywhere else necessarily. Yeah. I I voice, Josh. Oh, don't I? Can you guys hear me? I can oh, hear you. I can hear you. Sorry. Oh, okay. Never mind. <laughs> you know um, what? My screen's delayed, so I'm getting like the. I messed oh, up. Oh, okay. Here. There's uh, what? If I make the right screen bigger, I'm sorry. I, I don't know if Aegis specifically will pop up, but as far as like, the way you use Anima, I be, and things are still in flux right now, but I believe there's going to be some uh, attempt to have, I don't know if Anima as a, as a resource or what, but you will get to, that'll be a, in any of the classes, as long as you're a B, you're going to have this Anima that you can channel in different ways along with your class ability. And you might be able to um, focus on a, a particular play style or, or whatnot but yeah i don't know i don't know if ages specifically will pop up although that is that is a lore thing like the dying which is interesting because like if we were if we were developing another mmo you wouldn't even address the dying because in most mmos that's just hand wave the, right kind yeah of, you know, characters dying whereas back, it's like but... key to your <laughs> right whereas right right in the the world, if we have a dying realm right. yeah that's it's sort of an example where like the two weapon fighting system is not a lore thing it's just right it's right, just the mechanics yeah. of the game there's not there could have been there could have been a particular thing like to balance the energy in you you must channel to two weapons but there's nothing like that the right, narrative right. is focused more on you have this anima you can do amazing things with it how do you channel it some agents are more culty some are more just do superhero gun fu fights with two pistols or with two swords or, or whatever so we're yeah it's more focused on that and for reference two pistols is the best style to have you can't beat guns akimbo <laughs> Yes, yeah, no, never. Uh, there, there is a gunslinger class because we're going off the list of uh, the sort of ability package is from them. And uh, mm -hmm. writing that up, there is an emphasis on it's not just shooting guns, it's doing it with style. It's so, you're kind of guns and panache, basically. So to that, just as like, a, like an off reference, like I've been playing The Secret World and Legends side by side, like doing a whole run through from beginning to end. And I will say there's one pistol ability that was in the original that didn't make it over to Legends in any form, which is just a crime. And it's the one where you just spin around in a circle <laughs> shooting. Oh! It's like no, tap that... dancing. Basically tap dancing while shooting guns. And, yeah. and it literally, it, it was a basic <laughs> ability. Like, you could just spam it walking down the road nonstop. Yeah, yeah. you're so right. So ridiculously yeah. fun. It's not Bullet <laughs> Ballet, Foxfire. Bullet Ballet is the elite version. That did make it over. You stand in place and spin, and it looks very cool. But the, I'm blinking on the name of it now, but the basic one, which is literally just a builder, was, yeah, you're just spinning in place. Well, not spinning was in it, place, but it... spinning, and you can move while spinning. So you can just, and it costs no energy. You're not doing a lot of damage, but you can pirouette up into Kingsmith. <laughs> that would someone's definitely... Type, someone's typing Killer Flow. Killer Flow. Yeah, oh, yeah, Flow. Yeah. yeah, that's the correct name of it. It's a good name. It's a good It's a good name, name, and that actually very much fits the way, the, the kind of flavor I've been writing into this and Gunslinger just, it, uh, class. Somehow, Make it happen, Josh. Make it sure it's Somehow yeah. it didn't come yeah. over. I don't know why. <laughs> but this, dancing, is, this is absolutely that shooting. class, because like I've absolutely. written up some much more pragmatic firearms classes. So that would be like mm -hmm. not trying to look fancy, and they'd be like, what the hell are you doing? And the Gunslinger comes in. Like, look what I can do. <laughs> Be because like that's actually part of the channel. Yeah, doing yeah. that ridiculous thing and just have it, that's part of channeling the anime. So that you're doing your ridiculous an anime physics breaking actions. That just I makes almost, no sense picture... to the hardened mercenary who's got their assault rifle. You know, what you, I like to picture doing? like DK, like that kind of like tap dance stuff Diamond Kyoto does. Oh, you know, yeah. That crazy like mm -hmm. chaos energy. That's what that makes me think of. Which is great about a tabletop game. You could take that idea and be like, I want to make someone who studied under Diamond Kyoto and took his style and is a gunslinger and bam, make that character. I noticed one of the devs has decided to put a Gaki in front of us in the game. Yes, yeah. And uh, uh, B. The B is the easier too. And the B. 
But any chance we'll get Gaki in the monster book? Or, yeah, we can discuss monsters. Just, and you... just because they put one in front of us. Like, that's not normally there. In case anyone's <laughs> I think it's certainly possible. The only monster I can say for positive, because I know I wrote it down, was Revenant. <laughs> I've written okay. that. But, yeah, there will be lots of monsters. I don't know. I'm not currently writing them, so I don't even know which ones have been written up yet. And which okay. We, we, can't really, we can't really get any sort of preview on any other monsters. Just because they they haven't been approved yet, or I did share. I know I sent someone the work in progress art for the. uh, Oh yes, you sent that to me. I will send that to which uh, has the cool starfish like tentacle evil thing going on. Which because they're still my those and the revenant were my favorite monsters, and since I get to choose, they're. (laughs) (laughs) I'll send that to our host channel, so Mister Two Ton Waffle. Yeah, now that's oh, yeah, obviously is. just still not done. There's a lot of color work to do on it, but the, Annie Ghosh is doing the coloring and Ron Root's doing the line work on that. And so he's just, I said, can I share your work in progress? He said, sure, go ahead. And so good. what creature is this again? I'm sorry. A Draug. Oh, this is just, okay. It's the new the version Draug. of the Draug. Draug, Draug 2.0. Yeah, they're, they're, I will tell you this much. My plan is to have them appearing in Boston, one of the new locations I want to highlight. Mm. Interesting. Makes nice. sense. Yeah. I lived in Boston yeah. for a while. Totally uh, earlier, on, earlier on, we shared that one of the work in progresses of the Draug attacking Fort Independence. Okay, yeah. Sorry. That will get the snork, awesome. snork made in the chat just said, wicked monsters. Yeah, yeah. I got a little Boston accent. I'm not going to try to That's do right. that. All they want to know is if they got coffee. <laughs> Quick before they park your cars in Harvard Yard. Yeah, there's quite a few. We're actually, I have someone going through and actually making a complete list of all the monsters in secret world and we're going to pick the 30 we think are best to sample into the game for now i would love to do them all at once but then we wouldn't be doing the main book we would just be doing monsters yeah we there's people like i want more monsters i'm like yeah do you want monsters or do you want lore story and some monsters because that's really what we would have to choose. All monster books might happen later. And yeah, and that could always be yeah something to go to go further with it. We had one of the questions on our own Discord. The question was, what are your future goals with the franchise? Not just this Kickstarter, but anything possibly in the future. Obviously, that's at necessarily at Funcom's discretion too. But sure. how far have you already been thinking ahead, basically? So what I would like to have happen is I would, in in the order I would like to have it happen in, and these are not promises, these are goals. The next book I would love to do would be The Illuminati and North America. Start there. Okay. Kind of give you sort of a geography and a faction. Faction might take about 30% of the book, and the rest would be more about what's going on in North America events, people, places, monsters, all those kinds of things, and plots. Those would be the... And then do the same thing, Templars and, and, and Dragon. Sorry about my typos there, people. I'm not going to say <laughs> Dragon. I got fat fingers when I do it on my phone. I go so fast. I really had to slow down because I'm like, I don't mean to type. And then my phone tries to correct it. And I'm like, the dragon come Listen, after me and they want yeah, to no, I, I don't mean it. I don't mean it. I'm sorry. I, I fell for you. People were like, oh, but he's had some some typos. And I, in my mind, I'm like, so? I have freaking typos all the time. <laughs> Like how many so the, times the have important... you seen a, a tweet with a typo in it? It's just, it's a hundred percent. The important 100%. thing to remember yeah. is there are people who will be paid to edit everything that goes in the book. It will not be yes. me writing in the book. So you'll be fine guys. Yeah. I promise you, I won't, I know that I would not send something out that people paid for without running it through an editor first. That's only mm. fair. But then <laughs> after we do the three factions and the geographic areas what kind of combos, I really want to do a book for in a, Forgive me if I always say the name wrong. I always say Rotor. And then yeah. I want to, then yeah, I have a fifth great. book, which I won't say because Funcom hasn't approved the idea yet, but it's all got a, that's <clears> what the story would lead to. And Josh knows too, but he can't tell because I went over with him the other day. It's a little tease. He's, he's bound. Um, I, will, yeah. I, will, so I that, just want to point out real story quick that there's a, according to the monsters section in the achievements, there are at least 40 different types. Okay. So if you're going for 30, that's most of the way there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, Figure the golems and a cob and two ton waffle. Yeah, get them all in there. And not <laughs> and not everything that's in the game. We're gonna do some original ones with this first book. Right? Okay, original we'll ones too. Five, right, right. five new. I want to add at least five new. I want to give some people again. If we're just yeah. giving everything that's in the game. Well, and the and to be game? fair, as much as I like Gaki, if you're not in a Tokyo setting, they don't make a ton of sense. You know what I mean? So it depends what you're. 
what locations you're trying to provide for because the, uh, the way secret world at least the way secret world the game is set up like you generally don't see those things in the environments they're not in yeah, or think, the lore around yeah. the local area yeah. yeah generally speaking the creatures monsters personalities are very much influenced or part of the geographic region hence why i'm breaking up the factions also by the geographic region now i would love to eventually cover i don't know south america and africa i don't know what could happen there but we'd love to cover those areas as we just had a there was an interview not too long ago with i'm blanking joel bylos about where they were planning to go with Secret World. And he was like, yeah, eventually you're going to do stuff with South America and like Honduras and the Fountain of Youth and what have you. So yeah, plan to go to a lot more places besides just the Congo, which is the one that's, of course, as far as game content goes, the one that was would be next in line. In the book, we're definitely going to have a little bit of India, Boston. Cool. And did I say... Where was Dunkin' the Donuts one? Monster? Did, did I say France? <laughs> I think I said. I think did I say Paris? I don't remember what I said, because that's why I have notes because I don't remember <laughs> things. But yeah, we. I wanted to expand a little bit, and the core three are there from the game, and they're well established. Mm. We'll have them there. But <clears> in the future, I want to add a few new areas, expand out from there. So we're not doing the same. Well, and people don't think of India when they think of Asia, but there you go. Yeah, yeah Bomber City, yeah, Guatemala. It. it was Guatemala, not Honduras. Anyway, yeah, no, all for all for those settings, especially because those settings come with basically right all the lore with all the monsters behind them too, and all that connects and all that's fascinating, and everything is true, and we all love it. we love it all. Let's see some other questions from our Discord. A scriv, what is your favorite lore in Secret World, Secret World oh, Legends? Wow. Pick a child. <laughs> Just an easy question. An easy, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Pick a child. Oh, man. Like lowercase lore, like any of the narrative story or the lore entries themselves. I don't know. If it's the lore entries themselves, I like some of the horror beats I hit in uh, the filth lore. Okay. There's some little micro stories in that lore entry. If it's lowercase lore, like just storyline. Oh, man. So this was a question by Kitten, who is uh, hanging around uh, us somewhere. Ooh, a oh, revenant. man. He had a revenant show up. Arvind's one of my favorite creatures, certainly. Ooh, as far as the lore goes, I think... And also, was your favorite lore created by you? <laughs> oh, so... If we're, you know, if we're talking about the lore entries, like uppercase lore, most of those were written by me. Mm. So it is like picking my favorite child. But as far <laughs> as like narrative story, no, because I, I wasn't even in, I wasn't even involved. I was involved briefly during pre-production that was I was lent over from the Conan team to come up with the lore system, basically, or to spice it up. Okay. Um, so I came up with the buzzing and how that would work. Because before it was just a meta sort of lore. Here's your encyclopedic entries of different this and this happened. They, want, they wanted it spiced up. So I came up with this strange alien voice that beams into your head and crazily tells you things. I generally like the New England lore a lot. I love, I just love the sort of community cut off by mist. Maybe it's because I'm a Ravenloft fan and it's like a little mini Ravenloft in North America. Okay, this, yeah. These people cut off by mist and beset by undead creatures. I totally dig that. I also saw another question that said, asked if they, if we thought Secret World at Tabletop would be good for a newbie to tabletop games. And I would say probably because the 5e system is known pretty widely, so it's easy to find players that have a, a, an awareness of it. And the other thing that the Secret World setting has that's similar to games like Vampire the Masquerade is it's set in a quote-unquote real world. So mm. buy-in's really easy. I'm a barista that wields a magic blade. I know how the world works. I don't know. If it, someone might feel lost coming into a fantasy world. And be yeah, like, what yeah, language sure. do they speak here? You know the, so right, you know the right. rules of real life. Right. Mm -hmm. And Vampire the Masquerade, it's a game of occult secrets. So you can literally play your ignorance. You can play the characters like, what does this all mean? And you can role play learning that stuff. Another good game like that would be like Scion, where you play the children of gods in the modern world. Like everyone knows a little bit of mythology. Everyone knows the real world. So it's an easy buy-in. Secret World the same way. Everyone knows a little bit of, they have a favorite cryptid or the, a weird bit of mythology they like, and they know the real world that it's playing off of. So I would say, yes, it's an excellent, I'm selfishly saying it, but I think correctly that uh, yes it uh, it would be a good newbie game experience i think i do well, yeah i hope so because I, I would hope to play it and i'm a relative newbie myself so i'd be all for it <laughs> a blade wielding barista yeah i just wanted I think, a macchiato I think, my favorite, <laughs> oh. I think my favorite part of your filth stuff is the liquid 3 a.m what liquid is it 3 a.m is really cool a scrotomancer have you seen um, stuff yet 
Refim is oh. one of the, uh, obviously he's a secret worlder. He shows up here from time to time, but he's been making YouTube channels basically of dramatic readings of the secret world lore. Oh, is that the, I think so. Okay. I, have, I have listened to someone's dramatic readings of secret world lore and I've posted them. That was a while ago. And if this is that same set of them, then yes. And I've loved them. Yeah. Okay. One, one thing that never coalesced in the game that I, in the MMO that I was hoping was that we would eventually voice the, uh, the buzzing. We chopped the lore into bits, which is something I wanted early on, partially because that, that, that helps encourage exploration, but also because even though I love story and text and all that, when I'm playing a game, even I, like if I get like this huge book of stuff, I'll be like, I'll read that later. And I never get to it. Whereas if you read it in little bits, yes. Yeah. But even better, if you could listen to it while you're playing. So oh, I wanted, yeah. if we could have a weird string, figure out what the style of the voice is and have it beam in. Maybe after you collect all of them, you can listen to the whole thing while you're walking around. I've been yeah. playing a game that does that recently, actually. And you did, there's a whole bunch of, you, it's open world. You find all kinds of, lore, all kinds of, stuff around the world and when you pick it up it just basically just yeah starts playing the audio in the background and so you can actually just keep going and doing what you do and the audio would just play as you kept going yeah yeah and as much Love as i appreciate idea. yeah and as a writer as much as i appreciate the players that like read every scrap of text do all the dialogue mm -hmm. i understand it's hard to do when your senses are being blitzkrieged by really interesting sights yeah. and sounds I read, I read all of the lore but I was farming 10k monster kills, so I was, <laughs> I was literally just standing there killing the same thing over and over for 10 hours straight. And it's like, well, I'm doing this, I might as well have the lore section open and just read it might while well I'm read it. mashing the same button. And especially if it was like a creepy voice with the right distortion. One of the early inspirations for the buzzing <clears> was <throat> the movie, The Mothman Prophecies, the voice mm, on the phone that of Indrid sense. Cold was very much in my head. Not necessarily the exact voice of the buzzing, but something like that. Yeah. Yeah, Ruffin, Ruffin does a pretty interesting thing on the, on those, just the, I don't know, the, the distortion, the distortion effects are really good on, on, on his buzzing videos. He actually took, yeah, I gave him a bit of my own audio for that to use in one of Ruffin's last ones. And I couldn't even tell. I don't even know where I was. I was probably cut. That's cool. <laughs> I'm fine with that. <laughs> or you were just so manipulated that you didn't know it was you. I think that's basically what it was. Yeah. One um, of the two. No, yeah, Refum does a great job. You should go check out all their all their stuff, including their latest one. They did one for the Morning Light, oh, excellent. Uh, which is excellent. Brandon, now that we have you here, I want to kind of shift gears a little bit. The question has come up as to how the book printing works necessarily, and so oh, I knew somebody say, asked that. Yeah, I figured we had to. So I basically went in at the personally. I went in at the hundred dollar printed everything. It didn't go in at the two fifty or five hundred as much as I wanted to. I went in at the hundred dollar printed everything. So for example, if someone went in at that level, what exactly were what exactly would that entail, essentially? So what will happen is you've you, normally when you a good example is back when you used to buy cell phones, you'd sign a contract with the phone for free, and then you paid for it over time at the total price. Okay. Now you pay for the now you buy it, you go sign your contract, and then you pay for your phone separate. So in a sense, that's what we yeah. It's, probably too complicated way to explain it you're paying us you pay us the yes. hundred and you're getting the package but the cost of actual printing it that part of the cost you get a code and we'll send you that when the kickstarters when we're all ready you'll get the codes and you okay. go to drive for rpg enter the code and they will only charge you the cost of printing and shipping okay. so our money up front that we're supposed to make the book to pay the writers like josh the art whatever hopefully make mm -hmm. some money which at this level of course we've now made some money and we're not going to quit our day jobs but yeah. making a decent amount of which will help us do more books you're just paying the cost of printing and the and part of the main reason to do that just so people understand is shipping stuff if i wanted to get a book printed in china super cheap i don't know if it'll be here next year or the year after that bigger companies than me that are still considered indie companies like savage worlds a pinnacle have had stuff take months and months and then they were bidding paying extra to get the shipping because you have to bid for the container which okay. might mean that yeah. we would think we had the money to print this and we thought we had the money to ship it and then we wouldn't because the prices went up with drive through rpg yes you're paying the printing but when you order from them you're going to get it and if there's an issue you can hit they'll hit the button again they'll resend it you'll actually get your books much faster but you're okay we actually put in the fact the cost at least as of right now because printing's gonna prices may rise. What the approximate cost to print each item in that will be? Okay. If, so, like so, for example, your book, if you print it right now, is about 
it's actually nineteen dollars and sixty cents. I think I might have rounded it to twenty, but it's roughly the cost of printing, et cetera, for each thing you do. Okay. So that is that the at cost figure? Mm -hmm. That's at the cost of printing the what it costs to print the book. Okay. Which and please for those that are listening, if I did and I thought I was responding in a way that was clear and was not I think when people are upset they tend to read text in a way that they're upset and then I didn't find a way to make it sound like I was trying to be helpful. It sounded like I was being antagonistic to some people, which I did not mean to be. So obviously right, that was right. never my intent. I want people that I was trying like this is how it works and I'm so, and I just didn't do a good job of making people understand that. Now I hope I can see that. Some sometimes stuff. bluntness comes across as aggressive. Yeah. I am very blunt. Internet. I'm a nurse by trade. I'll it's tell you internet. exactly what's yeah. killing you. Um mm. <laughs> But no, I, obviously it's not what I want the way I want to come across. So I just so you know, I read those. I thought you were fine, but I'm also told I'm very blunt. So I might just understand it. Everybody correctly. reads a text in the movie. <laughs> Every, yeah, everyone reads in. a text in their own head, in their own words, in their own whatever voices in their head. And, yeah. yeah. And if they're Whoever's already the upset, if they're already yes. upset, you can almost guarantee they're reading it in the negative. And then, and there, there was probably, I eventually found it, I would say then my original response was, well, if you don't boil down to, if you don't like it, don't buy it, which of course that doesn't sound nice, but that's not what I was like. Well, if you don't like <laughs> it, you don't have to buy it. I'm sorry. And the thing came across mm-hmm. as if you don't like it, don't buy it. So I said, Hey, you can back at a level you're comfortable with. And that I had to learn the ways to put the text better for people to try and get the emotion in the voices so hard when you're right. right. Yeah. <laughs> Because yeah, you could go back instead of the printed everything, you could go back to the printed core, or you could go back to the digital core, and everything's yeah. all digital at that point. Like everything's well, in PDF you, form, you could, and then you can still get it printed. I read some of those. There was, it was like you're like you can go adjust what you're backing. You can just not back the printed part. They were dead set on just being pissed off, and, oh, and yeah, almo- yeah. almost like wanting it like somehow fixed. Like someone demands. You, you well, change I mean, something for them. And I get where there were, I'm sure there was, I'm not going to say who was which. There are those people who just will never be happy. And there's those people yeah. who were genuinely upset because they felt like it was intentional on our part to mislead them, which it was not. And this is our mm-hmm. first right, Kickstarter. Right. Like, I know what I meant. Sure. And emotion is Pyrus. The, so this is what emotion is Papyrus. Very crunchy. <laughs> Obviously, I know what I meant when I said it in my head. Hopefully we did like, we. I tried to answer every question at first. I didn't sleep for two days. <clears throat> and I was really upset. And I thought about canceling the whole thing at that point. I said, you know what? If everyone's going to be that mad, I'm just going to quit. And Ross was like, just chill out, man. And yeah, um, yeah. And it, then I Jake. went ahead <laughs> and I did. we did an announcement. We put a FAQ out and we did another update. And hopefully... Everyone's seen it because we I really mean, didn't. You've want gone to up a bunch since then, so I think it <laughs> is still turning but, out pretty well. Yeah, awesome. we're doing okay. I think this little Kickstarter might pull through. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> might make it also, might be close. I'm, I'm gonna yeah. plus a plus to the Kickstarter system in general. I noticed is that when someone does back out, that their comments get removed because they're no longer backing. They do now. And some people were telling me in private messages, oh, you can just kick people out and then they can't say anything. And I said, I, that's not, I'm not doing that. Because, You're like, yeah, I mean, but yeah. yeah that yeah. smacks well, of me I'm... being afraid of answering the question. Well, but I'm, really right, right. Bad. I'm just saying, really... I like that. I like that that's even a thing as part of the system that like, if yes. you're not backing it, you don't get to that's like, fair. If you're not putting you money to it, you really don't have reason to say anything anymore. No. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah. I actually, I genuinely that. that as just the Kickstarter system in general, that it handles it that way. It you don't have people to. just back you for five bucks, shit all over your comment board, then leave. You know what I mean? That shit stayed there. That's very counterproductive. So I like the way their system works there. We were just joking earlier before you came in about how we're talking about we're talking about Jeffrey Combs of all people, and how Jeffrey Combs actually had a Kickstarter himself for, and I just I just brought it up just to remind myself, but he was going to basically do, it was a a one man stage performance of Jeffrey Combs doing Edgar Allan Poe and it was called Nevermore. And he set up a goal for $375,000 and he only got 92,000. And so the Kickstarter failed spectacularly. Ironically, his title of his Kickstarter was correct. Oh no! Ooh. Just rub salt in that wound. Kick, it, I mean, kick that... him when he's down. Oh, yeah. 
But wait, think... look who we got on the line. It's Jeffrey Combs. <laughs> uh-huh. And here's Jeffrey. And I like him too. No, but the thing is, I guess that was the thing that scared us. I don't say scared. The math sort of had to do in my head. And I'm a number cruncher because I used to work retail. And I have a spreadsheet that told me what I need to price this out at to make it work and all right. that stuff. And it's asking 40000 for a Kickstarter on a first time out. I know I can make it, but will people be ready to back it? And that low, am I going to get that much money? It's a lot. And if most indie companies are lucky, if they squeak about ten or twenty thousand on a Kickstarter, then that's mm-hmm. what. And then their and their level of art they can produce because of that is either stock art or ha- they happen to have an artist on board who's doing the art. Otherwise, they can't get the look and feel that you really want. So I'm just I'm thankful for everyone who backed. That's giving us the option to really put the love into this thing the way it's supposed to be. And if they, we do love Secret World here. We are we are some of the some of the biggest Secret World lovers, I imagine, except for the people that have got into the two hundred and fifty dollars special game, and the five hundred dollars personalized NPC level. So mm-hmm. for this special game, I'm really curious. Which is now already all six. It was limited to six. All six have already been done. I think Faux Fire. Did you say you're one of them? I think they said uh, they wanted to, but they missed it. Yeah, they oh, said they the missed Fofire it. There. Said that, uh, they said they jumped on the extra 250 oh. when it opened. Whatever the extra 250 was for. That you're going to get your... You, we're making a character, you get the art. But the thing was, it really comes down to too many of those slots would have killed all... We can only have so much art to be done for the game. And or and Ross was like, how many games do you want to run, Ross? He says, I'll run one. And I said, <laughs> mm, I'm really good. I'm a good 5e player, but I'm not a good 5e GM. Okay. And nobody really, if we could con, if you can convince Josh to run a game, we can add some more game slots. Listen, I, we're going to talk about that <laughs> maybe personally later. We want to listen. I, I have <laughs> won a game or two. Over the <laughs> listen, I've got ideas in my head, but that's not, that's for a later time. But so, right. So the special game, you said it would basically be with who necessarily? Ross, be with... Ross is going to run the game, but okay. Ho- hopefully I would like to, depending on how long the adventure is, it would be great to run the adventure that Josh writes. Mm. That would be the ideal, but mm. we'll, we have to look and see. We can only play one game, so it's not like we're gonna. It's not gonna be a twelve-hour fest of all day long. We can't. That's a bit much to ask anyone. You're, um, you're talking about Ross Watson, who you've listed as the project manager. Yes. Um, uh, Guy's Origins got award-winning more writer and game, game designer. Okay. Yeah. He's have, got a I ton a, of experience. I have a plan for you. So what you do? Is you plan it for next year's Extra Life 24-hour charity marathon? <laughs> Just do a 24-hour campaign. Yeah, no. That's an idea. <laughs> okay, if the Kickstarter hits a quarter no, million dollars, no. we'll talk. Okay, that's not. I think we're safe. This is the planning uh, and see and setting up a campaign that go for 24 hours. Funny thing is, I, I hear an idea like that, and I'm like, hmm. Yeah, right. I was gonna say. I'm just yeah. Josh. Talk to me afterwards, which you're crazy for, man. We'll do anything you're willing we'll to see. do. But, we'll uh, see. We'll yeah. see. Yeah. Well, I would love when we get closer to release and everything. We should definitely, I think, look into some. We should do some live stream game to, games. I think this year will be my. I don't know how many years it's been doing Extra Life, but probably my third marathon. Two the past two years, I've done like. 28, 29 hour streams of playing Secret World from beginning to end in one run. Last year I did it on a treadmill. That was amazing. <laughs> Damn. 24 hours on a treadmill. Yeah. I did a 20, I did 29 hours, 24 on the treadmill. I have like little breaks here and there, but not I six miles. Spent, I spent about 24 hours not sleeping one time and I went to mow some guy's lawn and I thought I saw toasters in the yard and thought I was running over beach balls. I decided it was time to be done for the day. So I'm definitely not doing a 24-hour stream. I know exactly what you're talking about. I have been sleep-deprived many a time. <laughs> I once saw a those green like highway signs. I was driving along and there was a green, there was one of those signs was walking, holding a handbag, hitchhiking. And it took me like a full minute and a half to realize that's not possible. <laughs> Signs I don't s- hitchhike while holding handbags. That doesn't. It's happen. not a thing. I, I on sleep deprivation, I saw the black dog on driving through Central Illinois. Yes, that that's truckers really talk about. One. I didn't know that was yes. a thing. Yeah, the thing I saw. I don't know. I would necessarily call it a dog, but it was something ambulating on four legs, yep. uh, that like bear sized and black. Vegas. And I slammed on the brakes, and there was nothing mm-hmm. in the road. So we can add that to the game now. That that's so, actually like a like it's whatever you hallucinations is fair game. Uh, yeah, 
the worst That's thing was, is my bummer. dad is a truck driver, and he kept talking about a guy who was a truck driver who had not kept his logs, was running long, wasn't sleeping, and thought he saw an elephant in the road, and assumed, of course, it can't really be an elephant, except and he hit an elephant? It had, oh, no. a train for a circus had an accent. There was an elephant in the oh, road. My I don't God. know if it's a legend or not. But <laughs> I just imagine just, you so hit the elephant, like, I disbelieve. Really like, I saw an elephant in the semi- middle of the road. Be like, but it actually yeah. was an elephant. A semi-truck uh, you know with an elephant is not pleasant for either party. I want to I want to ask my dad about, uh, if he's heard that one. Because my dad's a truck driver, like, my whole life growing up. So Mine old I'm, steel, curious, so, yeah. I'm curious if it's made the rounds. Yeah. That sounds, I, that, that sounds like one that would have made the rounds. For sure. <laughs> I say I have a I have an epic story I tell from time to time of my twenty first birthday party in which we drove to Canada and my friend was driving and we were trying to make our way back to New York, leaving like Montreal like ten o'clock at night and trying to drive all the way to New York City. And he, he had completely just caffeinated himself up with venom energy drink and a vanilla coke, which should tell you the year. And so he and he was like, I'll be good. I'm good. And he started the trip and we all just passed out in the back seat. And we were mostly all just napping, all sleeping. And I wake up and the car's at a dead stop in the middle of this two lane highway. And I'm like, What's going on? And he's this truck won't move in front of me. And it's like, why don't you move around it? And he's like, because the median the medians are like five feet tall. None of this was true. None of this was even remotely true. And it was like, okay, you're done. Go in the back seat. We'll drive from here. It's okay. But yeah, no, he completely started hallucinating. And um, and then it, it, later on, we asked him, and he was like, he's like, at one point, he's, the trees on the start of the road, like the giant like pine trees or whatnot, started like walking across the road. And yeah, it was a mess. So I'm getting that we should do something with sleep deprivation, the monsters that come from the dreaming sleeps. And, yeah, okay. Oh wait, the, the dreaming. Dream, yeah, dreaming. Anyway, yeah, the dream is dreaming, lack of sleep, kind dreaming, of Dreaming, yeah. The, the lack of sleep is actually the portal to that realm. I don't know. I feel like the um, black dog <laughs> has to be a thing. 100%. 100%. There's no there's it's something that common's got to be like What is it they say like the They said it in the South Africa lore. It's something about the people's belief helps form what the things are. No, it makes sense. I'm trying to think if I've referenced the black dog in any secret world lore, and I might have because I like that. I like that bit of of real world. Added to that idea. Do more of it. Oh, yeah, yeah. We should definitely use it. But I'm trying to remember if it's come up. It might have, like, even just, who knows? There's so many things thrown out in lore entries. There's so much. I've read it all, and I still couldn't tell you, like, individual things necessarily because there's just so much. Yes, you have to head out here shortly. Is that yeah, anything, just, uh, anything you I like, want to... I like to be awake before I pass out drugs to patients. It's a thing. I thought fair. you were going to say I like to be awake fair. before I pass out. I thought that was interesting. <laughs> you know, yes, also that. <laughs> That's deep, man. I had one session where I worked for a couple months. I was working up to 160 hours every two weeks. I was working doubles back to back and only one day a week off. And I actually fell asleep standing up in front of my drugs. And I said locking this drawer up i'm not passing out medications to my patients because that's not how it's safe so i didn't do that anymore yeah it's a little dangerous just just a little yeah. bit though yeah i like my patients to stay alive let's see do we have any does anybody have any extra questions for brandon before he goes we had of course the question came up what is your favorite caffeinated beverage i've just down to tea now if i can help it because i used to drink for my favorite gaming beverage used to be it was called two two liters of pepsi drank in a session mm. so mm. four liters of pepsi per session was the that's rough Yes, there's a scramble Discord. Someone asked that. <laughs> is it being sleep deprived isn't normal? Oh no, of course not. Yes, that's why I mean, it is Farmer me. says favorite flavor I'm of sleep tea. deprived like every single day. It is my normal. It's <laughs> far too common. Let's see. Do I have no any, has any other amazing um, questions? I will head out. Last chance. Last call. What do you believe were the hardest mechanics of the game to translate to a tabletop system? Easy. It's really good. <laughs> we just ignored the mechanics of the game. No. No. <laughs> Just so, ignore them all. Let's the, throw out the, that part. The, in a sense, that's true. In this, in, in the idea, like Josh was saying, narratively speaking, we want the feel of what that profession, class, archetype, however you want to label it, works. It's how it feels to play it, not how it mechanically works, because that's not something that's going to translate well to a tabletop where you roll a die and you have these mm-hmm. abilities. That if you try to mimic the game at the rate games lets you use abilities and everything, it 
I'm sure you could design something that sort of resembles it and people still would be unsatisfied with it because it wouldn't be the video game. If you want the video game experience, you need to play the video game because that's the only way you can get that instant click a button satisfaction. When you're playing a tabletop, you're taking turns and waiting for other people to go no matter what. Yeah. Or convert it to fourth edition if you want a more MMO feel. Yeah, I guess that's true. Convert to the system of your choice. We're yeah. starting here and we'll see what happens later. That's my answer. <laughs> Sounds good. So, thanks for having me, guys. I know you're bugging we're me coming. for a while. And I kept, yeah, later. I was like, I don't know if I want to be in an interview or not. Uh, <laughs> so, <laughs> I mean, we're very loose oh, we here. We try to keep it respectful. We try to keep it loose. And yeah, we're not here to antagonize. We're here to speak for yourself. <laughs> what are you talking about? I'm not here to antagonize. <laughs> I'm definitely here to antagonize. No, but yeah. I, literally, I think I was actually, I was streaming both versions of the game last night. I think it was last night. My days yeah. get really mixed up. And while I was streaming, I was like in between little cutscenes for playing. I was messaging Scrib back. And then at some point I hit up the Star Anvil Twitter. Once, once Scrib had got back to me, I was like, hey. <laughs> Just while I'm here, in between this cutscene, let me see if we can do. Something. Yeah, that was basically all. Good night, yeah, everyone. I'm, I'm glad. Josh, have a good night. Thanks. Have fun. Thanks for coming. Good night. Have a good night, Brandon. Thank you again for joining us. Much appreciated. I've been sworn to keep all the secrets. So we've talked <laughs> to Funcom executives plenty of times. We, we we understand the I can't say anything. Yeah, I could probably say something. We under but... yes, it's like we can say a, something. Yeah, like coffee. That's my. Oh, my oh sure. coffee is canon. Gotcha. Yes. <laughs> Just tap the nose there. Actually, uh, I recently used Kirsten Geary in a Vampire the Masquerade game I was running. Nice. I was, using, I was using a quick start adventure, and the characters meet one of them. The group meets a, a vampire that's one of their sires and is part of the Camarilla, which, if you're unfamiliar with Masquerade, that's the secret organization of vampires that. that keeps the rest of the world not knowing about basically a perfect okay. fit for okay. someone who would be a, an Illuminati. So she became, I just took her straight from pretty much made Kristen Geary a vampire. And she it should was, be uh, no surprise that I was, uh, I was going to say, mouth, if that is game. actually the case, it's not surprising at all. Yeah. If you found out she was a vampire, you'd be like, Oh, Explain yeah, no, that's, that's what she would be. I played Malkavian because nice. That just makes sense. <laughs> that was my first LARP character was a Malkavian. My first role playing ever, weirdly enough, was Werewolf the Apocalypse. Nice. Yeah, my, my first like White Wolf product was their a Werewolf card game, a Rage. Okay. And then, I was, and then I found out, oh, there's a role playing game. And then I found, oh, there's a vampire component to this game. I believe I played the, the vampire one too eventually. Well, I actually played Dungeons and Dragons after, <laughs> after where I came into That's things the way... really backwards. <laughs> That's the way I hope to do it for my son. When he's, oh, let's play a tabletop, or can you teach me about tabletop? I'll be like, yes, here is the essential tabletop to have. It is called Secret World. <laughs> and so I plan for him to eventually be like, when he's talking about D&D, he'll be like, oh, Dungeons and Dragons. That's the spinoff of Secret World, right? Yeah. That's, yeah, that's my overall hope. I don't know. <laughs> let's make oh, it happen. Yes, I was actually going to mention that, Balmer. Yeah, we found Kirsten Geary's coffee mug. It's, un it's underneath the labyrinth, the Luminite Labyrinth in New York. Before Nervell went and patched Krampus rockets, so they don't work the same way anymore. He used to use them to get out of bounds. And in New in the New York zone, if you get out of bounds and go underneath the Lumi place, you can get into the cooling water slash lake area under there. And there's a coffee cup down there, which I can only assume is Kirsten Geary's based on the agent mission about her coffee. That's something I did not know. I'm just going to say it. Yeah, it's her coffee mug. The, the, the other main weird one is the, there's an NPC under, underground in London. I think, I think they used to be maybe like a clerk at one of the stores. And then instead of deleting them, they just shoved them underground or something. Not really sure. That kind of makes sense. Yeah. To be like, how do we I know, move this I know character? Be like, I don't know. Just shove them 10 feet under. Yeah. There's this. I remember the first time I got out of bounds in London and I was and I was running around and it scared the shit out of me when I ran in there <laughs> cuz I didn't expect anything to be didn't expect a person to be down there. Fantastic. But yeah, um, Kirsten Geary's coffee cup is an actual <laughs> actual in-game thing. We'll have to make it an item in the in the tabletop game. 
be so. I went through most of my questions. So Joshua, I always want to give you this option. What do you have to plug right now, besides Ooh. the tabletop RPG? While we have an audience here for you to plug stuff at that loves you. Let me see. We do love you. Only fans. Is, Refim is butt legs. Okay. I certainly would plug the Kickstarter. Back that. Right. Yes. Take us through even more goals. But if you want to play a game in the meantime, a game I wrote on that I highly recommend is They Came From Beyond the Grave with an exclamation point by Onyx Path Publishing. I'll go it ahead and a, post a link to that at Drive Through RPG for They Came From Beyond the Grave. So there are a whole line of They Came From games. The original, the, or the first one is uh, They Came From Beneath the Sea which is you it's a horror slash humor game where you play in a bad b movie basically you play characters in a bad b movie and in that particular game you play 1950s sort of atomic monsters rubber suits everything is thinly veiled communism is the threat history science theater 3000 fair yes they came from beyond the grave takes the same sort of concept but instead you are now playing in a campy 60s 70s hammer horror era with the bright orange technicolor blood and actors who are just way better than the parts they're reading, just totally committing to some ridiculous monologues. And the game has some great meta mechanics, like rewrites and things. You can, you're trapped in a dungeon, you spend points for a rewrite. Yeah, that's a cheap set. You bust right through that to that wall that's actually styrofoam. Right. You get hit by a falling boulder. You take zero damage because or, it is styrofoam. Yes. Yes, for a lot of rewrite points, you can have a missing scene. The, the giant monster is bursting from the graveyard and then <clears throat> skip scene. Oh, thank God we took care of that. But it's a game where you can mix the humor and the horror to whatever level you want. You can technically use these rules to play a serious horror story, I imagine. It uses the story path system, which is very cinematic and versatile. It is a fun, fun game, so I totally recommend that. Or it reminds me of a there's an event that actually takes place near me, relatively near me in <clears throat> Phoenixville, Pennsylvania. And it's called uh, Blob Fest, which I'm Ooh. sure you know of the movie The Blob. Oh, the Blob. Yes. I love the 80s you've, you've version heard of the original Blob. movie. The scene in Blob The Blob Spaces. where it comes into the movie theater and everyone's like, ah, and they all run away takes place at this theater called the Colonial Theater in Phoenixville, Pennsylvania. And every year they host what's called Blob Fest. And it's oh. basically a horror themed event where oh, you get to this. watch. And we went and we watched the Blob and Creature from the Black Lagoon in 3D with the, with the glasses and everything. That's awesome. And it was a double feature. But yeah, the scene in the Blob where they're running in and you're sitting in the exact theater cool. that, that was filmed in when it happened and uh, it's a big thing it's like a, every year they host a big yeah blob fest in, in phoenixville pennsylvania i might have to try and go to this someday that's exactly the kind of event i love and like uh, on the street outside like they shut down the street and it's all like vendors selling like old school horror posters and all kinds of all kinds of vendors and then like in the second floor of the theater they've got like the original props that were used in the movie itself and etc and it's it, yeah it's a pilgrimage it's a pilgrimage yeah you definitely have to do that yeah, yeah uh, they came from has a bunch of supplements out including they came from camp murder lake which takes which advances the system so that you can play 80s slasher and similar horror and there's a book yet unreleased that gives a bunch of monsters and mechanics on making monsters and i think i have something in there as an example a threat which combines field of dreams and children of the corn which i call field of screams okay all right <laughs> baseball players coming out of the fields but they're undead i like it <laughs> I think it's the thought of take any kind of movie where you have the loser underdog team. What if they made a deal with something in the cornfields? So that they okay. Just... Snork. Yes. Can That's I ask a dumb answer. question? Of course. Dumb questions are welcome. Dumber the better. <laughs> what is the color blue? <laughs> Pink. Not green. I've never played any tabletop RPG, D and D or anything. I don't think I know enough people in real life to play. Could it be done virtually? Yes. And that's gotten better over the years. I played some of the really early websites that tried it. And at first I didn't care for it. I'm like, man, what, how could we, how can you replicate the sitting in a friend's basement and playing? But it's gotten a lot better. There are mm -hmm. websites like Roll20 is one. Roll20.com. Fantasy Grounds. Google and you can probably find people like giving the lowdown on what might 
be the best one for you. But uh, yeah, and some of them have some really cool, if you really deep dive into the mechanics of it, features where you can do cool visual things like you cast a spell and there's a cast fireball and there is a graphical fireball. representation of it on the map. Or you can play it simply on a like a Zoom call or something. Especially like... You could just do a Zoom call. <laughs> right, especially yeah, games that are like Zoom theater call, of the mind. Uh, especially games that are theater of the mind. So that would be a game where you don't need like a battle map where D&D is... Fifth Ed actually works both ways. Like Fourth Ed is... It's all about you need the maps, you need the minis, and it, the powers are really based on the squares and everything. 5e, it, it's heavily based on that, but it works loosely enough that you could play theater of the mind. You don't necessarily have what's, to have... What's third... Was third not grid based? It was. I don't, but I don't think it was as necessary as like with fourth ed. I'm trying to remember. I feel like maybe I've done the grid thing like once. Almost all of my tabletop stuff has been like non grid related, like just more, more like free form. Yeah. And a lot of games work just fine that way. Some better than others. Some you cast a spell and it gives you a range of a particular amount of feet, but you can do that in your head. If, if someone, if people like to play really tactically and they want to know, was I close enough, yeah, yeah. then it works better yeah. for that. Some games are much more nebulous about like the powers don't even mention spaces. It might mention something more vague. Vampire the Masquerade is like that, or they came from is like that, where a map might actually confuse things more if you're using tokens, mm. just because the game itself takes those things a little less exactly. Snork says, can I voice ask a question? I have too many questions. A conversation might work best. I'm such a newbie. Just go ahead and ask them, Snork. I don't think we know you well enough to be like, yeah, come on and voice. Don't, uh, it's not a... Yeah, don't take it that the wrong way because... Don't take just, it personally, I mean, yeah. It's just a life of having, being a streamer and a content creator is just that we have to take precautions for our sakes as well as yours. And in this case, also Joshua's as well. Yeah, but in no general, offense. yeah. I'm, no offense, I'm, but yeah. But yeah, type any questions. Um, I am happy to talk at length about tabletop stuff if people want to listen, especially people trying to get into it. It can seem really mm -hmm. intimidating at first. It is not as hard as it, it'll seem. The best way is actually probably to play or watch a live streamed game. You have probably, uh, is there a category on Twitch for it? Yeah. I'm curious. Uh, There's absolutely. gotta be. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Or Google find some group or whatever, or you, some people maybe you even know or streamers. And there's all kinds of different levels. There's people that just play. Yes, uh, you can totally uh, just go watch people do role playing games on Twitch like right now. Or you just say, oh, I want to do the very popular one. And right now, and I know this is probably contentious, critical role. but Critical Role is one of the most popular yeah. d d groups because they're all a bunch of voice actors they're all professionals and which, i'm sorry I was just saying, which i find very, which i like critical role i find it very entertaining but as a newbie if you watch it don't feel like you watch it and go oh man i can't yeah. uh, don't might, feel yeah, like you have to mind. imitate them necessarily trust yeah. me the magic of tabletop will happen there i go on really at length on different styles of play you don't have to mm -hmm. voice a character you can narrate what's happening much as some novels say like they had a terse conversation and some novels like Chuck Palahniuk would write just dialogue and wouldn't write mm -hmm. directions. You can play in all those kinds of styles. You don't have to. Yeah. Or you can play it's, just it's, straight up. Okay. You do this hit, you do this hit, you do this. You just make it just like a, yeah. Strictly yeah, tactical combat almost. Basically. You don't have to say the intimidating thing. If it's not coming to your head, you can just be like, I try and intimidate the guy by threatening mm -hmm. his life vaguely. And you roll yeah, you know, other mechanics like, for that. Other people will do the same action, but stand up and pantomime right. and boy yeah. i've been part of like fairly decently sized group six or eight people around a table and generally speaking you'll have a blend of styles you'll have the person that's like the theater person then you'll have the person that just the table doesn't have to be uniform yeah you can play different styles yeah i've played in a lot and, but that being said you might find tables that work better for you than others sure uh, so a lot uh, of that comes down to personality Right, absolutely. But yeah, in, you can totally play experience. different styles and mesh. Yeah, it's hard to it's hard to role play with someone that you just don't get along with. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, and that, that's the whole reason why my why the last my last attempt at tabletop fell apart was that I figured out that the people that I was actually doing tabletop with were they were jerks, and yeah, it just didn't I that really. really... I had that really awkward thing of I actually really liked the guy because I worked with him. And he would DM. And yeah, then he got married and, and me and his wife were like oil and water. And that is a weird situation to be in when you're mm -hmm. friends with someone 
and like literally just being in the same room with their wife drives you absolutely fucking crazy. Okay. I, like to the point, like we were role playing like a Star Wars game, and she's like, I'm gonna be this crazy, weird alien creature, blah blah. Yeah, I'm an ex stormtrooper that's xenophobic. <laughs> like we were literally just like butting heads all the time. So that sort of thing can cause problems. Yeah. But if you have, game, a, game, you have a fun game group, tables can implode. But yeah. Also, yeah, a lot of it comes I, down to the group itself. Yeah. Also, I will say that oftentimes drinking while playing is fun, but over drinking can cause problems in an, in a role playing setting. Yes. <laughs> I remember Mel someone says, being very confused a couple weeks later, like why my character was shooting them in the back. <laughs> and I was like, do you not like, remember uh... last week when you were shit faced and decided to do a bunch of messed up stuff to my character? <laughs> They're like, no, there you go. <laughs> You're like, fair, this you deserved happens. it. Yeah. So Josh, you silly Billy, you were just in a live streamed tabletop RPG on Onyx Path's channel a bit ago. <laughs> oh, that's true. Oh yeah, I don't have links at the moment, but if you look either on Onyx Path Publishing's Twitch or their YouTube station, where I believe most of their videos eventually find their way to. I um, want to say I've... we've tweeted out from our Zero Point Report Twitch channel as well. When I see it, if I see it and it's, I see it in time. Yeah. Yeah. It's um, yeah, yeah. But I do a bunch of games, not just with me in it, but you can see all sorts of games. I did Trinity Aeon. It's a, it's a whole set of games that take place in the sort of sci-fi setting, but there are three or more distinct time jumps that you can play in that setting that are huge. You can play like 1930s adventure stuff, but you can also play in the far, far future space yeah, stuff. Yeah, there you go. Uh, uh, but I play that. on it. Yeah. 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 And uh, yeah, that's the, st yeah. And they have all kinds of games. I'm trying to think of other games I've done. I've also done, I've been on their channel for Pugmire, which is a, it is basically D and D, but with, it is in the, it is in a far future that sure. technically sci-fi, but none of the characters really know it. It's a fantasy setting where humans are gone. Who knows where they went to there's theories, but they're a mythological thing to the uplifted animals who are like cats and dogs who are now humanoids now and have, you, so the beauty of it is you can take your favorite pets and be like, I want to play my St. Bernard as a, a paladin or right. I want to play my cat as a necromancer, which fits because cats play with dead things and they do in that setting. But I recently wrote on a book called squeaks in the deep, which is pug Myers. Basically it's their underdark. So it's cute and spooky. And it gives rules for playing rodent characters, mice and rats. But I play, I played on a stream that was playing in that setting where I played a mad scientist rat who was very much inspired by Montag, actually. I think I stole some Montag lines and gave it to that character. <laughs> okay. I just go ahead actually, and put down a, a link to Squeaks in the Deep as well. Actually, yeah, if you follow that link to Squeaks in the Deep on DriveThru, I believe they have a link to that sample game. They might in the, uh, at the bottom. Yep. There we go. Oh, nice. There you go. And the secret world connection there is rat mad scientist inspired a bit. by Everything comes back to secret world yes. or at least it should. It's all true. It's all true. It's all being dreamed. It's uh, it subsumes everything, which was my point about whether something's canon or not. It's like, we literally have dark Agartha in the game every single mm -hmm. day. I'm running an alternate reality. Yeah. Yeah. That's There's nothing against, Oh, go through one of the, uh, the Agartha portals go through not only to places but they go to can they can go to times as well they can go now, to... granted the dark Arthur is literally all the bad endings but it's right. seemingly, seemingly an infinite combination of bad endings so you could walk through one of these and be in the victorian age you could walk through one and be in feudal mm -hmm. japan or something and if you go through the rogue agent mission you'll see a portal to age of conan and mm -hmm. you'll see a portal to anarchy online <laughs> yeah that's right they're literally in the game in the mission it's not a bad ending if you were a mushroom like, that's I, why I, yeah I, it's not unheard <laughs> of that uh, to think that oh you just you go through one of agartha's portals and suddenly you're in a different timeline where you don't have to stick to the exact history of a location you can be like this is just this is the location that you ended up in sort of situation you could go into an, an alternate reality i believe the station master talks about meeting like a younger version of himself Oh, yeah, yeah, I think so. It's like in the dialogue tree if you just talk. The station master has seen things. Vomer knows. But yeah, trying to think of anything. Yes. To my knowledge, then, we don't ever talk to the young station master. But you could in the tabletop. That's right. Sure. <laughs> it's all go. possible. It's all could, possible. Not only is it all true, it's all possible. You could make an entire party of multiverse variants of the station master. That just... <laughs> 
<laughs> I, that just makes me think of I've been doing lots of replay throughs of Elden Ring on like randomizer and the, the randomizer has an option to do oops <laughs> all you set every enemy in the entire game to a single thing oops all station master everything in the world <laughs> is station master oops all monsters yeah when Brandon said he was like well, do you want monsters or do you want like the actual the core book itself and it's, oops all monsters you just get all monsters <laughs> that's whoops. it okay so to to me the thing about that is at least with the beast jerry like the it's the monsters are story maybe they're not setting right although they're also setting because they have like where they're from how they originate yeah. like, i would say the so, argument is that the monsters that are like the hitadama and the gaki and they are well, they, find they, them in tokyo they are to, in a lot of ways like the setting and the lore like they they are right. that like you I would mean, have like chupacabra if it was in like south america yeah. or it was yeah no but i just mean i don't think it's a i don't know that you i don't view it as deciding between like oh do you want more base story or more monsters like to me monsters are part of the base story if that makes sense though i do understand the differentiation in cutting mm. stuff up for a book system i guess right. i do i'm not saying i don't understand that i'm just saying like from my perspective of looking at it like the monsters and their backstory bring a lot to the setting. It's true. Yeah, yeah. or your reference says or New Jersey. So we'd have the Jersey Devil, or we'd have uh, anything that's in weird New Jersey. Essentially, you'd have the ghosts that inhabit like one street in Central Jersey. You could have a whole bunch of stories. Yeah, I live in Jersey, Refim. So <laughs> yeah, and the monster descriptions just are going to have little nuggets that'll probably make for for basically just little story hints and things like i think even in the revenant right up there's a mention of a particular cluster of revenants that were in chicago <clears> right before the great fire and so that, that reminds so there's me, a bit of war i need to go back and look at the footage i one of the things of playing the two versions of the game side by side is sometimes i'm a little out of sync because i can't play them at the exact same time because that's right doesn't have but it doesn't work very terribly well for sure mostly the revenants in legends are the, the raven based but there's a couple that are like rat and at least especially in the original game there's one that does like what's the revenant cast in the game where it's like it's like the cast of crows we're just like flurries like flurries ravens out even okay crows, like whichever and then but there's ones specifically i think in the siege farmland that you send out a flurry of rats, at least in the old game. Yeah, I, I believe in the tabletop write up, we go into detail that, uh, yeah, it can be various swarms of things. And uh, sort of the idea they, of the werewolf. I know they still yeah. exist, Vomer. I just couldn't remember if they actually throw rats or if they just do the standard bird cast. Because I feel like the cast got redone. Actually, uh, I, I need to get going, unfortunately. Okay. Yeah, it is starting to get a little late. But uh, it's been great. It's been great chatting. I like chatting about Secret World, and I like chatting about Tabletop, and I get to do both at the same time. Looking <laughs> forward to it. Things together. And uh, congratulations on it going Everything. so well. So Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, so congratulations on yeah, being part of this Kickstarter. Congratulations on being a father. Thank you. Yeah, welcome, yeah, welcome to the club. There's back taxes. You'll pay well, them mean, in time. Pain, it really, happens so. during life. I'll but congratula through. congratulations, Scrib. Thank we you. love you. You're welcome here anytime. That's much appreciated. <laughs> yeah. And uh, even if, you know, it's not on the show, we're, we always love talking to you. Absolutely. So, yeah, so go check out Scriv stuff. Of course, go check out the, the Tabletop RPG, but also go check out They Came From Beyond the Grave. What was the other one? Squeaks in the Deep. Oh, Squeaks in the Deep. Or if you're a Vampire the Masquerade fan, there is, in the fifth ed of that game, there's Trails of Ash and Bone, which features a story that I wrote set in florence featuring all kinds of nasty necromantic okay okay nice. and of course your novels as well strangeness in the proportion trying to think of trying to think of any other off the top of my head uh, that's only full-size novel there's a novella which is it's basically just a long short story uh, oh, okay called geez what is it? dearly bleak okay dearly bleak okay gonna give a quick google for that so i remember it later and one more thing, if you just wanted to push, you mentioned this to me, albummargaritasart.com. Oh, yes. My wife does awesome, surreal, macabre art. I feel like a bit of cosmic in with your goth art. Go check that out. She, and on various sites, sells all kinds of great stuff. She can be commissioned, but you can also get things like stickers, prints, all that great stuff. T-shirts. I have a few awesome shirts. Nice. 
Okay. Just to make sure I covered all the bases there before you went. But yes, it's always a pleasure to speak to you. Always a pleasure to have you on. We love you. And we hope everything goes goes excellent with the Kickstarter, with, with life in general. And yeah, always a pleasure. Thank you for coming on the show, man. My pleasure. Thank you all. Yes, thank you. So long. All right, good. Now that he's gone. Uh, always a pleasure to have Scriv on. That was actually a really good fadeaway he did. <laughs> yeah. That, that was the top tier. Yeah. So we did have, now that the two guests that we have are left, we did have at least two pieces of noon. One is, or two pieces of news. Two pieces of noon. Yeah. Of noon. That's where my those. brain is. One. ON started today. Woohoo. Started today, October 13th. Runs till, who the heck knows. Some end date. Some end date, probably. Let me look at my. Let me look at my previous year for when it happened last year. Probably to give us a good indication. Last year, it started right today on the 13th. The daily logins have not started yet. Jimmy, you said possibly the 15th that they were going to start? Yeah, I think from what I remember looking at the Discord, it looks like a two-day delay. Okay. Yeah, Bomber said the 15th. Start the 15th. Okay. And last year, the... So an event ended on November 11th. So I would probably guess sometime around there as well. Maybe like November 13th or something for the login rewards. Who knows? But yeah, but we got the hourly boss going in Agartha. And do we got the other Halloween missions up as well? The broadcast, I assume. Yes. Not sure, but we do have the uh, broadcast is up too. Okay. Sales. Yeah, no, broad broadcast is up. If, Wa- if Waffle would look at his notifications in the goddamn... What? The what? He's got an envelope no. with the number two next to it in the bottom right corner of his screen, which has a message from Screed for the broadcast and Madame Rogette for the uh, meowling. For the mewling, yeah. Oh, that's what I meowling. thought was the spam. Meowling. I just like those there. <laughs> that was good. So we have the return of the broadcast, the return of the meowling, mewling, meowling. I don't know. Mewling. Spam. Bless y'all for pronouncing lot. Sam Hain correctly. Yeah. I'll say it right like twice and then I'll say it wrong every other time. That's how hey, I roll. Sc- scratch. This is the serious. This is serious right now. Th- this game has no login rewards. Okay. <laughs> I don't know how many times I have to say this. There are no login. <laughs> login record record. Whatever. <laughs> Say reward. Oh my god, that's how deep and ingrained it is. He can't even say the word. That's amazing. I was being genuine. No, I know you were. I know you were. They do not exist. (laughs) Yeah, the problem is Waffle's the one hosting this shit. If it was my screen, you would just see just all my keys, just my keys that take up all the that's me. My screen. All my cash keys that take up. I would be at the I'd be the same level as Jimmy. I'd be like at least three or four levels of IP higher or of a, of elite level higher than I am. If I actually used all my cash keys. Oh, I'm sure. Way too many. I have way too many. I have 234. (laughs) But also before it gets much later, uh, Mm. there was about the other news too, right? The other news as well. I believe if this is what you're referring to, of Vomer announces the winner to the romantic cake creation contest. Woo! Four years later! Let's go! Four years later. Where is Vollmer still here? Vollmer, where are you? <laughs> I think so. They were in chat just a couple minutes ago. There they are. Yeah, they're... yeah I know it's getting very late. For <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's no. okay. yeah, it's okay. <laughs> There's okay. a forum thread. I yeah, you posted a whole forum thread for the event that happened around February? It's okay. No, this says three days ago, so... I'm not in the list, so it doesn't count. <laughs> Turn it off. Jimmy didn't even make the list. Get it out of here. <laughs> All right, and there it goes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. There's lots. No, there's genuinely some really cool stuff. There's some really cool stuff. Yeah. Lazaya, grand prize winner for the True to Life cake. The first place winner, Lyra, for their cake. Runner up, some guy. Whatever. Yeah, uh, who this loser is. <laughs> this cake. Listen, that cake was so good, I had to make the cake a second time for my wife's birthday in April. So not only did I make that cake once, I made it a second time because she wanted it again. 
It's nearly 5 a.m. in the UK. I'm certifiably insane. Why am I still here? To applaud my Gaelic. Sawen. Well, you're you're Sawen. skipping all of you're skipping all of Armour's blurbs. How dare you? How dare you, sir? I'm, they're I'm all really yeah. They're all excellent. Uh, F in right, chat. That... F in chat. Blurbs were so I sweet. F Taste and see. Ban. They are fun. Yes, they are. Because it's all like the one <laughs> for the first place for the grand prize winner. Or I'm sorry, the first place for the true to life winner. Whereas you said. There is no denying an intense aura of ex extra dimensional mystique inherent in this cake creation. It was even photographed on an ominously large rock, eerily similar to a fragment in between. And even we never in all this age would have expected anybody to make the whole table in all its life-sized glory. Because they even put it on a on a table very similar. Yeah, it's just the next one down. Uh, there. That one. Yeah. A table very similar to the one that's actually portrayed whereas i just used one of those fold-up tables you mean you didn't carve your own from wood no and craft it didn't, didn't have the time the <laughs> <laughs> didn't lathe it uh, fucking lathe joke. three game winners we got the grand prize preferred panzer preferreds never pronounced so names uh, first place winner for that pink hair who i think i saw in the chat yep yep Pink hair here. Pink hair's here. What is, what did that, I had a question about that one. Where did that one come from? That looks like that's, is that a game? Is that a, is that also, a. You're, you're skipping the blurb still. I'm not. No, my right here. Oh my. Oh yeah, I'm, I'm not going to, sorry. I'm not going to read every blurb. <laughs> They're all good. Ain't nobody oh, got time what for that. Shit, man, that, that's like your whole, <laughs> you're up there. Your whole job up there. <laughs> is to read everything. What are you doing? I'm supposed I'm, to sit I'm, here and look good. He's supposed <laughs> to run the show. <laughs> and I've got the voice. And you have the voice. Welcome. You got us, sweetling. We love what you did in every way, from the writing to the screenshot editing and everything in between. You took 40 cakes. That's as many as 10 fours. And that's romantic. <laughs> lovely. It's quite lovely. No, I'm just window dressing, really. That's all I'm here for. It's inspired by the actual bakery in London, but I made it from scratch. Oh, that's just, is that like a painting? Or is that in a video game? I can't tell. It looks good, is basically what I'm saying. I can't figure it out. It looks awesome. Smith. Sir Romantic Cake was knighted over a story written with such charm. Drenneth was clearly having fun with their creation, and we had fun seeing it. This creation camped its way directly into our hearts. Sure. And the true and heart winners, Maru. I remember this one. Astounding art and an adorable and aptly written recipe for a divine romantic cake drawn in such a way that we wish we could take a taste to. Anima extract correctly warns its users not to use it on the uninitiated, as is right. It precipitates a messy discord. I Look really at that like one's the dripping. Artwork. The artwork yeah. on that one's really good. First place winner, Drummer Girl. Any tiny knit creation is sure to be an intense and intricate process, and this cake is all the more precious for it. While the Nermeagle photographed alongside the knitted cake was not judged, we really appreciate seeing them. Please kiss and cuddle your cat for us. Which I'm actually surprised my own cat has not made a has not made an entrance yet. She usually, whenever I start talking, she usually just starts like bothering me at all times, but I don't see. It's weird of her. It's adorable though. Runner up, Kitten. This creation is full of love and joy and depicts such a warm and serene scene with so much heart. I do like that one, actually. <laughs> Just because it has our Nermeagle cats being adorable. Here it says, we need to play Pans as one note. The music is great. That one has music? That was right. The true to game winner, grand prize winner, Romantic Cake floats majestically into the void with its napkin off to the side. Oh, excuse me. Off to the side as they're followed by a table spinning aggressively in the back and a fork wobbling in belatedly at the bottom, all to a kazoo arrangement of also Sprack Zarathustra. And it has a table and a fork floating by. That is hard to beat. It's true. I thought it was thus spake. Does thus spoke Zarathustra? Really? I don't know. I don't know what I'm talking about. What's this one? But it's played on kazoo. It is extra epic. Right. Thus spoke Zarathustra is the translation, right? Sprack. Is it Sprack? Zarathustra. Sprechen German. Sie Deutsch. Sprechen Sie Deutsches, yeah. Ich mag sicher Welt. I know a little bit. Took German in high du school. Hast. about it. Du hast mich. A truly tasty and oh so fluffy sight. 
one so thoughtfully cut into ten slices for your fellow sweetlings, we can't wait to try the recipe ourselves. It's by Hydrangea. Honorable, true to life. Honorably true to game, went to Refim. With honeyed words and a looming visage of romantic cake, we witness Refim's ode to Valentine's Day. Taste and see. It's his In, in Medias Res presents Valentine's Day, which will go to the other ones. How long is that? I don't know. That's what she said. We, lo <laughs> we love you. We love you, Refim. Since it's not going to play it right now. Rifla had the friendly competition inherent in collecting 2,500 romantic cakes. Leaves us in awe. We were hoping somebody would form a romantic cake out of romantic cakes, and Rifla delivered spectacularly. That is, yeah, 25 full stacks of 100. Good, good lord. Good golly, Miss Molly. <laughs> Bone jangles, as the pastel pink of the romantic cake is a striking symbol of love. There's so much emotion in this sketch, emphasized by the sole source of color that is cake. Surely even the forest god's deeply distraught heart would flutter. As a picture of them in the shadowy forest. No, a shadowy forest. No, that's Polaris. That's Erdrog. Oh, no, oh, I was talking I about the, the one, next picture, the one above it. That's like no, the that's inn. Besieged Farmland. Besieged Farmlands, that's what I mean. Bumblebread comes in, even after hundreds of screenshots stitched with love. The Erdrog's hunger for romantic cake remains. I remember when Bubble Red was doing all the, the mini, mini world. Yeah. yeah, that was a mini world with cake. The best Wire kind of mini world. Wire rats, mouths of Montauk, eternally gobble sweetlings and sweets alike with their undeniably adorable gaping maws as the unutterable lurker steals cake in this looping creation. <laughs> That's pretty good. I like that. Yeah. And then the rest is just prize distributions and all that. When will we be getting our prizes? Maybe next Soon. Uh, Halloween. I'm almost positive that the stuff that we've, that uh, Andy has said that he would be given out over time has just, I don't know. I don't know. I thought it had been given out. I hope it has been, but I've never received confirmation as such. All I got was a, oh, yeah, no, I've got it. I've got it written down somewhere or something along that lines. You never um, hear a maw unless it's a gaping maw. True. That's just a fact. Yeah. Because if the maw is not gaping, is it even worth talking about? Is it? Yeah, is it a maw? Because when you, what you scream into is a void, not a maw. Yeah. Uh, uh, scream into a gaping maw. That just sounds dangerous. I moved into my new flat and had no Wi-Fi yet, so I played a record, the 2001 soundtrack, and got high, and the space between some of the songs is very long. Needless to say, there's at least 10 minutes of silence, and then thus spake Zarath Zarathustra came on and rocked my world. <laughs> <laughs> so like nothing and all of a sudden <laughs> good time classic piece every knoll is a grassy one yes i guess congrats everybody on their winnings of the romantic cake creation contest and mine had i believe i made it with it was like a coconut coconut buttercream but the coconut was totally an accident i didn't mean to put coconut in it just a bottle <laughs> the little bottle that looks like vanilla extract there's a bottle that looks exactly like that, and it was coconut extract. <laughs> That's funny. And I didn't even realize until it was like I put it in, and then I was like, wait, what's this bottle? Vanilla extract. Wait, what's that bottle? Coconut extract? Oh, no. <laughs> so I was like, I'll just put in more vanilla. <laughs> oh, no. It was it's fine. It was blank. cake. Refem, we were talking about this, I think, even before the stream, and while <laughs> Mikey said no, I leaned towards yes. Here's my idea. Is if you if you have a butt, be legs. if you have a butt, it is not legs. But no, my wife no. tells me all the time that I do not have a butt, and so therefore my butt would be a part of my legs. Look, even if you have legs, you could just put them up and then use your butt as legs. You know what I'm saying? Butt legs. Yes, I do actually. <laughs> butt legs is a thing. I'm sticking by that statement. <laughs> You heard it here first, possibly. But like, <laughs> the welcome. bigger, the better, basically. To have it work like that. Because to me, that just sounds like it hurts. It is butt legs. All of the romantic cakes created and submitted were amazing and filled us with love and joy to see. The creativity of everyone was outstanding and as sweet as cake itself. <laughs> yes, Bobber, I do indeed. I'm just straight. It's just straight down. I have no butt. It's a family condition. I have a butt. It can be legs. Found your new way to play Secret World. That's right. Butt style. I don't know how you're gonna I don't know how you're gonna do it, but <laughs> Jimmy's a rabbit, except. 
<laughs> the butt of what? Theseus. At what point does it stop being the same butt and starts being a new butt? Anyway. You. <laughs> on that note. But. Agents. This has been the Zero Point butts. Report. <laughs> More butts. Transitive property of butts. This has been the Zero Point Report strain, strain 70-SKS. You can catch us recording live every other Thursday night at 9 p.m. Eastern Time here on the Zero Point Report Twitch channel, where you can also join us and chat with us while we do the show live or download our show wherever podcasts are found so you can listen to us on the go. Jimmy, where can we find you online? Would you like to know? I... You can find me at the end of this rainbow at JimmyTheRabbit.com. And We're talking at... about your OnlyFans. <laughs> at youtube.com <laughs> slash jimmy the rabbit and twitch.tv slash jimmy the rabbit and at one rabbit on twitch and i don't have an only fans yet but working on it <laughs> always goals gotta shoot for the goals two ton waffle where can we find you online that is a poor choice of phrase <laughs> i know <laughs> it was awful it was, it was turn the other cheek <laughs> no, you can find me here twitch also on twitter two ton waffle two ton waffle.com pretty much everywhere you're on youtube as well and i'm ocho you can find me both on twitter and here on twitch at big mikey ocho of course for this episode we want to give a already a long long left us but we want to give a thank you to brandon from star anvil studios for showing up and talking with us and of course the incomparable Joshua Deach, Scrivnomancer, whom we love. Go show him some love. And yeah, we love all the guests that we can have. You can get in touch with us by engaging with the show on Twitter at Zero Point Report, checking out previous shows on our YouTube channel, and joining us on our Discord server, both named The Zero Point Report. From all of us here at The Zero Point Report, we want to thank you for tuning in and wish you all the best from the secret world. Have a great night, everybody, and we'll see you next time. Bye, everyone. Enjoy your butts. But as many as you can get. So many butts. Butts for Combs. Thank you, Jeffrey. <laughs> Thank you, Jeffrey Combs. Uh, butts.